good morning. Um, time being nine o'clock, we will open up the uh, delegation meeting. Um, the, uh, our recording secretary is going to be a few minutes late. Uh, Representative Cordelli will take notes until uh, she arrives and is set up. Uh, Representative Crawford's not here today. Representative Bucco and Umberger and Smith will also not be joining us today. So, with that, Representative McCarthy, would you leave us with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, my intention today is to uh, pick up where we left off uh, last uh, meeting. Uh, we will probably start in with uh, Ed. We will start in with the uh, uh, jail's budget first, and uh, then we will move on from there. Uh, it is my hope that we will be done ahead of lunch today. Um, I mentioned before that we will meet, uh, uh, we need to pull everything together and finalize. We'll do that in Concord on the 23rd, I believe, will be when we're in session down there. We will post that meeting. It will be at lunch. <coughs> so with that, um, if there are public that would like to speak, I'll open up input for 10 minutes um, so that you have an opportunity to address the delegation uh, prior to our last negotiations. Um, and we will also take public input at the end of the, uh, at the end of our uh, meeting, which would allow more time. If you'd like to speak in the beginning, uh, it's a cumulative number, 10 minutes. First person takes 10, there will be no second person. So, uh, but like I said, there'll be plenty of opportunity at the end. So, with that, is there anyone present that wishes to uh, uh, address the delegation? Susan, just state your name, please. I'm Susan Wiley, and I live in Sandwich. Uh, very briefly, uh, I got on the Farm Advisory Committee because I was interested in what was happening with the farm and the jail. Um, I was concerned initially about what was going on with the, with the work that was going on in the jail. Let me just first say that uh, the inmates did last year spend 7,500 hours with the Department of Public Works and the farm. And of that time, uh, in spite of the stories that go on about chain gangs and slavery, that's not what it is. Um, the folks who go out to work uh, earn good time. They don't earn money, they earn good time. And will the farm manager said to me that in all the time he's been here, there have only been a couple of persons who did not want to go out to work. Um, they've been the equivalent of two and a half persons in labor in the last year. There's lots of studies, and I, I put in, I put around on the desk um, some footnotes and bibliography of some of those studies. And I know March is a very busy time for you all, and you don't have time to read them, but a couple of those studies I will put in the Carroll County Commissioner's Farm Advisory Committee binder, and I know that you also haven't had time to read that, but the minutes are in here, and the reports are in here, the, all of the responses that we made to questions that were asked about money are in here. Um, and I will say that, as I recall, it wasn't in the too, too distant past that the delegation put forth a budget and that sent the finance, the uh, treasurer down the road because there wasn't enough money to work with. And one of our commissioner's elected officials left because of the budget of the delegation. And we cleaned out the business office from the old procedures 
and policies and hired two people and they have spent a lot of time getting accurate records and they shared those accurate records with the Farm Committee. And that information is on here, including some responses to whether or not this was real information. It is real information. Um, we have different ways of working at how we, we have different ways to work at how, what it costs to run the farm and what the revenue was. Just in the same way, we have looked to our finance people for that. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, please. Uh, my name is Mark Longley from Sandwich. And um, I'd like to follow up on Susan's comments about the final report from the Farm Advisory Committee. Um, it is an excellent final report. And I, I wonder how many uh, of the, from the delegation have read that report. If you haven't, I would strongly in, encourage you to do that. Uh, they put a lot of time into it, and it was very, very well done. Um, regarding the feasibility study, um, you know, the, the, it, the Advisory Council asked for $10,000 and um, of a, a probably a $30,000 uh, sum to conduct the study. I personally don't know why we would want to go to the outside and, and private industry, private enterprises, to fund a study that um, is going to pave the way forward for county land. If it were my money, and I was I was uh, in charge of county uh, county funds, I would pay for the entire study, and um, and also the farm budget has been gutted, and this delegation has decided um, to take that ten thousand dollars. The only acceptable word I can think of is being stingy. But that $10,000 is now coming from the farm budget, an already uh, gutted budget, um, which just doesn't seem to me to be in the spirit of cooperation with all of the work that the Farm Advisory Committee has done. Um, as far as wood processing goes, um, I know that this uh, delegation, or at least the subcommittee, wanted to recommend that the wood processor be uh, sold and the wood processing be um, be over um, for this year, and um, actually that kind of flies in the face of what the Farm Advisory Committee is uh, recommending, that there's potential there, and um, I would hope that we, that both the delegation and the commissioners um, would continue to support current legacy farming and forestry operations until such time as the study is completed. Don't nickel and dime it to death now. Don't squeeze this farm to death now. Let it continue until we have the final recommendations from this feasibility study. And I do c want to commend publicly the commissioners and the, uh, the farm manager for continuing on with a gutted budget and making this farm work in the last year. And I thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. We have, uh, it's 9.10, we have five minutes left for public input. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak at this time? Remind you that there will be input. The commissioner's not now. Um, please, um, um, state, um, state your name. My name is Dorothy Milner. I'm a Thank resident you. of Wolfburn, New Hampshire. And I've been very interested in the farm because I see it as an incredible asset to our community. And I hate to see it under attack, which is what it feels like to me as an individual. Um, I see it as giving great benefits to our prison system as well as our community in terms of food production and a great opportunity if we wanted to ever do a solar array for our towns um, in case of hardship, getting food locally sourced so we don't have to transport it here. Um, it really just alarms me that it seems like the intent is to privatize everything. I think we really benefit from our nursing home here, our prison <coughs> here, and our community farm. It's in our hands, and we shouldn't just throw it away. 
I'm worried about what comes next. Are we going to privatize our roads? Are we going to privatize our schools? Are we going to privatize Medicare? And I personally am feeling under attack and not at all supported by my representation. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? We have uh, four minutes. Um, Mark, have we heard from the Kendall Foundation, uh, Dean's here from Howie Sound, have we heard from the Kendall Foundation at all about what they're willing to fund? We have not. Okay. And then I was just wondering, what time do you think White Horse might be on? Where are they? They, um, I, I can't give you a definite time right now. We'll, we'll work it in. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Seeing no further comment. Uh, Can I speak as a citizen? Sure, you have three minutes. I only need one. Um, Amanda Bevac from Wolfboro. I would like to have you add $2,000 into the budget for the revitalization of the Parker Cemetery. It has uh, been there before and been taken out. This year they're having a ceremony down there and they're putting up a new sign, etc. And the little stones need to be replaced and there is a bid of $2,000 to have it all revitalized. And it does, I believe, fall under the, uh, the UPW system. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we'll close public input. Um, just to respond, have you taken, have you taken the, uh, that request to your fellow commissioners? I have. And has there been a vote by the commissioners? They are not in favor of it. Okay. Thank you. Was it, was it three to nothing? No, I believe. What, Madam Mazzea, what was the vote? Uh, I was the only one in favor of it. Thank you. Okay. So I'm Let's, speaking as an independent citizen. Thank you. Um, let's, um, let's start in. I'm working off the uh, revenue sheets. Uh, dated expenditure sheet expenditure thank you from the 24th and uh, let's return to um, the jail and I believe Representative Como you're going to uh, bring some new information forward or what's your pleasure yes Mr. Chairman I just wanted to bring up a little recap from our last meeting we had some questions uh, about the jail budget it was a breakdown of the new equipment line and it, uh, I don't know if this was distributed to you with the actual breakdown so I'll just quickly read it it's very short uh, there were under the new equipment line there were four new radios at three hundred dollars each four new pistols complete set five hundred dollars each a defensive tactics wall mat fifteen hundred dollars six pairs of hand restraints thirty three dollars each two sets of belly belts $39.27 each, a full duty belt set, $80 each, restraint chair replacement parts, $100, safety helmet, $178.85, spit nets, $159.80 a case, red man suit for defensive tactics, $1,670, a red man helmet, $242, and a shop knife at $500. And that was one of the uh, questions we had asked uh, about the cost breakdown of the new equipment. Thank you. Uh, there's also been a request again, uh, and I would like to open up the conversation uh, with the delegation about the adding the ozone laundry system and its cost savings. And very briefly, I would like the jail supervisor to discuss more the details of the ozone unit and bringing up the fact that it will no longer, it will allow us to no longer use hot water, which I was unaware of, uh, and it would be a cost savings for the propane, but uh, he has a little comment on that. You want me to talk about the adjustments in the budget, or you want to talk about that afterwards? So. I would start with the ozone unit itself, and then cold water and the propane savings. Okay, thank you. Uh, the ozone system, I have, I quick three little packets that can go around and look at. Um, look, that's wrong, sorry. I'll keep up for a second. Uh, it's a unit that actually attaches right onto the wall and goes right into our water line itself. It actually shocks the shocks the water and brings it to the proper. If I'm wrong, Bob. Just correct me. The proper pH. So what it does is it opens up the fabric on uh, uh, all the materials 
So it kills everything, every type of bug, HIV, Hep C, everything that's inside of there. With the ability to use cold water, so we wouldn't have to use the hot water, so that's saving on propane. Also, we, we already spend now about almost $9,000 in sheets, so we would be, this ozone system is $13,970 one time cost to put in. We would be reducing the sheet cost come next year because we'd be doing our own sheets in house. Currently, we send them out of house because they're we don't have a way to actually kill everything that's what's in there. This will actually take care of that problem. Low maintenance on this, it's every couple of years to change out some filters. So once it's in, uh, it's not a problem to keep it up to date and running uh, well. Most of the jails already use this system. Some of the nursing homes use this system. And back in a packet, that, as I sent around, just for a quick comparison, Belknap County Nursing Home and Concord Prison, it goes into how much water they use. <coughs> how much laundry savings, uh, there are significant savings using this system. And right off the bat, just getting this in the first year alone will save almost $7,000 year one by not setting the sheets out. Uh, so the biggest thing for us is it kills everything, which is what we really need over there, and we don't send the sheets out anymore in the short. Thank you. I did have a question about the, you said it, it cost 13930 to install. But is that correct? Thirteen thousand nine hundred installation. Yeah, that's, that's the unit install. The yeah. unit and the installation. It's everything. Now, if the unit did need to be replaced, uh, is there a part to be replaced in it? There's an element that gets uh, changed out every three, four years, and that's a couple hundred dollars. So it's not. So the replacement cost of the unit, again, would, would it be thirteen thousand if it was a brand new unit again. Yeah, but you're not looking to replace it entirely for a long, long time. Another question. Yes. The um, does the ozone laundry system does it negate the use of soap anymore, or does that? No, you still need to use detergent. So uh, now that's already in my budget and another uh, supplies. So you still use detergent, uh, which we already have in there. So it doesn't negate that. So the ozone goes throughout the water that's being dumped into the into the tank, and the ozone itself is what is killing all the bacteria. Correct. And viruses and everything else. Yes. Correct? And then the detergent is cleaning it off, yep. and that will go off into. It's nothing that's left residual from the ozone. Is that right? No. Matter of fact, and with this type of cleaning, you actually get more uses out of your um, laundry itself because since it opens it up and it doesn't do the hot water and the else, you actually get a longer return on your clothing and a longer return on your washer uh, machines itself because since you can turn it down to cold water as well. So there's also savings that come on those end. Anybody else have any questions? Representative Kennard. Thank you for taking my question or point. Um, actually, I, I did some analysis on the information that he sent out. And I think the important thing to remember is that the $7,000 savings should be a ongoing yearly. It's not just that first year. Because you take line uh, 69, uh, go to some 8500 to about 1500 That's the cost for the replacement of some that will still need to be replaced. And so you have that 7,000. So even if you had to replace this unit every two years, it pays for itself. But it should not be that kind of replacement. I also, to the committee, did send out, um, I, I tried to find independent sources that assess this that were not commercially trying to sell it to you. That was hard. But about the fourth or fifth uh, layer down in, in Google, I finally found some reviews, one from the UK and another from a, a periodical devoted to senior care both of whom did not find any problem with it, found it to be beneficial and cost-saving in a nursing home institution or the other one in any institutions. Thank you. Representative Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. How about hospitals? Do hospitals use this? Yeah, some hospitals will use this. Nursing homes will use it. A lot of, a lot of places that wash a lot of clothing to use the system. Okay. Representative Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do, do we have a... I know you've told us how much this costs installed, and you've talked about $7,000 savings this year, but obviously that's not a whole year. Plus, are we going to have to buy sheets, I assume, to start out with? Correct, and I think a representative will go into that because there is some adjustments to the budget about for buying sheets and reducing the sheet cost line. If, do you want me to speak to that? Do we have all those figures? Yes, he can we, My next question is, can we get the, you, you went through a list of, items and costs. I have a list of the items, but I couldn't keep up with the costs. Can you provide that? Do we have copies? Uh, sure. Do we have any more copies of this? I can make copies, yes. Okay. 
Thank as you. they can be provided to you. Thank you. Okay. Representative McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, the figures in this handout are rather impressive. Um, the Belknap County Nursing Home saved uh, annually more than $20,000. The Concord Prison saved $93,000. And because of the, the, the size of our correction facility, you're estimating that we're going to save a minimum of $7,000 a year? And then some return on the heat as well. Uh, we won't know that on a propane because you can turn down the cold water. I can't calculate out exactly what that savings is, so guaranteed 7000 and then top of that with some propane savings as well. Thank you. To uh, the individuals, uh, if it's your group or if it's you, whoever has brought this forward, we want to thank you for your time and, and looking so uh, deep into this for us. Thank you. Any further questions on that, Representative? Well, was this something we could look at using at the nursing home as well? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's on my list for next year. I'm going to see how successful it is at the jail, and that's um, on my radar. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Representative, come on. Jason, the, uh, the savings for the new sheets, uh, you have it listed here as $1,500 or less. Is, am I reading that correct? For clarification. For following years, in our budget, we put about $1,500 in that line. That's for MOPS and replacement of sheets once we buy the initial cost of sheets. So that line item itself will go down to about $1,500 a year starting next year. And that would be line 69, correct? Correct. <coughs> I did have a follow-up follow question about who's doing the laundry now? Do you have the inmates doing the laundry? And will they be correct. obviously continue to do yes. that? Yes. Okay. They'd be doing the laundry, but... Yes. Should we continue? Uh, yes, there's uh, some changes on line 65, uh, which would be the propane. And it's been estimated that it would go from 84000 to 86000 in addition. Um, it's coming up? Yeah, that was one of my questions. Why, why would the propane need go up? Or you're saying to raise that? Because it was just a budget higher to begin with already. Oh, that was an oversight on between the finance department and myself. Uh, we should have brought up earlier. So looking at last year's budget, we already spent 89000 and change last year already. <coughs> so bringing it up from 84 to 86, we're pretty comfortable with that, with the prices that the county has and the uh, savings, we should be good with that. And as we go further through this, you're going to see that actually there's other reductions in here that balance us out. <laughs> and, and that's only for the fourth quarter is when our, uh, is when our propane contract kicks in. <coughs> And also, the uh, the county signed a new energy contract, uh, which we, is going to give us a savings of um, nine thousand dollars on line sixty one. <coughs> Do you have anything to add to that? So taking the line from one hundred and fifteen thousand five fifty down to one hundred six five five zero, and uh, the county administrator talked to that they did have a new company come in and with significant savings. If you like to talk about that, Kevin, I'm not sure. Yes. Line 60. Uh, oh, 61. It's electric line. expense. <coughs> what are you proposing? It goes from 115550 to 106550. 106550. <coughs> Continue. Yes, there's also a change on line 88. Point zero eight eight. The photocopier expense is going to be reduced from seven thousand five hundred and forty dollars to six thousand five hundred and forty dollars, a reduction of thousand dollars. Gave that to us last week. Okay. There's also two grants that the superintendent is applying for. Uh, one is uh, the integrated delivery network. It's a capacity building fund uh, which would help develop a full continuum of care for offenders. And it's going to be, a, uh, the amount is $24,560 for the year. Uh, the superintendent also applied for a Second Chance Act grant in the amount of $200,000 over 24 months. And that funding will be used to um, hire a LADAC and a 
half ton case manager for in, for the inmate trust program. And they'll have to add 25,440 to that grant line. <coughs> Any questions on that? Total grant line will be $50,000 for two upgrades. <coughs> questions? Say that again? It's on page two of the uh, handout. Question for the uh, superintendent: Did we hire Layback last year? We have a full yes. We have a full time Layback on staff. Yes, mass level clinician Layback. Yes. It, it says here um, that that grant's going to be used to hire a half time. Correct. That half -time, a half time Layback and a half time case manager to work on the reentry re piece of the trust program. And if, if I could. Uh, I'm sorry, that, that's being funded by the grant? Correct. And how long does the grant run? The $20,000 grant is for 24 months. Okay. And at the end of 24 months, did you just bring on a person? Not necessarily. Well, it's about to reassess, bring back the data, see if it's working or not working, and something that the county decides they want to keep with it. Ken, we'll be also reapplying for more grants. There is other grant opportunities past this one to continue with these. We would not be hiring. We'd be looking to... Um, for the LADAC, we'd be looking to outside and um, uh, resources and contract with them uh, so it wouldn't be hiring on staff. Thank you. Uh, Representative. Only after we get the grant, right? Yes, after the grant. Representative Cordelli. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm just wondering if the commissioners have reviewed this uh, grant application and are uh, comfortable with um, all the provisions. To the commissioners, the question. <coughs> Did you guys review that grant last time? Just passed Thank you, Commissioner Hounsell. I'm trying to think. In, in regard to grants, in, in particular this one, I have to tell you that I'm not totally uh, aware of all the provisions, and I am uh, trusting the superintendent. I believe what he is saying is. Uh, Good news. I apologize for not being better prepared to answer this question to the commissioner. I believe no. the past commissioners approved the grant. Is that right, Jason? Uh, it was both. approved last fall. No, I think we did. Too. You, this current commissioner board approved it. The, the grant was written by the outside consultant that the that the delegation and the county um, paid for. That was part of his contract. Was to help this county write grants. Um, so the 20, the IDN grant was written by the outside consultant, so it was the Second Chance Grant Act with the consultant and myself and staff working on it. Um, there's no matching funds to this grant, either one of these grants. IDN money is just straight to us, and the uh, Second Chance Grant Act, we get it, is reimbursed back from the federal government, back to the, um, they give, we pay it out, they reimburse us back and forth. That's why it's money in the account. Thank you. President Chandler? Can well, I don't know who to ask. I mean, I'll ask the chairman of the subcommittee. But so where, what line are you adding these grants to in the expenditure side, and what line are you adding the revenue to on the revenue side? Well, you can defer to someone who else, but... That will be added to the 200 fund. When the grant is approved, we'll come back to you at one of your quarterly meetings and ask you to do that. So... If I may, yes, so we don't have to do anything right now. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, what is the process for uh, reviewing grant applications, just so that we know? If I if I could, um, I'll cut to the quick here. The uh, at at present, it's a commission function. Um, and there's legislation that's passing through that I believe is working its way through the House, past the House, the House and that uh, if it were to become law, then the delegation would also be involved in the grants. At, at, may I, sir? At present, the law says the delegation may form a grant committee. The, the uh, legislation that is passed the House says that it shall. 
and it also stipulates several things that must be in the bylaws of that committee. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Babson. Mr. Chairman, we, uh, we get the grants and we turn them over to the Grant Review Committee. They are supposed to uh, read it, let us know if there's anything hidden in page five that we didn't see, and come back to us and, uh, with, our rec with their recommendation. Thank you. And the Grant Committee is whom? Uh, Mr. Como, uh, Mr. Siemens, and one other. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, Just ahead. a quick follow-up on that. In the coming weeks, as the, as the legislation does move through the House, <clears throat> the Grant Review Committee is going to meet with the commissioners and will be uh, scheduling meetings with the delegation in order to come up with a formal policy or a method of how we're going to do this. So it's streamlined from beginning to end when applications are put in. So everyone from the superintendent or whoever makes the application to the commissioners, to the public, to the delegation, so we all know what those those conditions are. And this was a good example of why we need to review grants. So we're, we're in the process. Um, if, if I could, Commissioner. Just to uh, let you know, one of the things that I appreciate about the bill that's working its way through the legislature is where will give us a better handle on grant procedures that uh, will make it easier for me to have to not have to say I'm, I'm not prepared. Uh, so I, I think this, uh, the bill that's going through tightens it up and we'll all be uh, more aware of uh, particulars of grants. Representative McCarthy. Yes, uh, the legislature, because it came through the Municipal and County Government Committee, so I'm familiar with it. Um, the legislation will require that the delegation uh, make up the, the rules for the, the grant acceptance committee and they must be voted on and approved by the entire delegation. Thank you for that work. Representative Chandler, and then I'll come back to you. Thank you. Uh, maybe Representative Cohn. On the list, is it okay to go back to this list? Please. I don't know where we have it. On the list of equipment, actually, you have defensive tactics wall mats. $1,500. Is that $1,500 each or $1,500 for the number you're going to buy? Or Total. How you buy them? Let's say. Total. Total. That's for how many? That's to have the entire room. Okay. And then the same thing, I guess, full duty belt sets, $80 each. So one belt set costs 80 How many are we buying? It depends on how many we need. I mean, we're trying to replace as we go along. So I just give you the price of what each one is. It'll depend on each year. We try to, re what money we have in the budget, we try to replace a couple each year. Okay. Yeah, I, I have to, my, the question is, you, you're, how many are you going to buy? Are you, so you're only asking for $80, period. So that's going to be one. I put $80 in there with the cost. If we can buy more in our budget after, again, these are estimated costs because we still haven't gone out to bid or anything else on these things. If we have more money left over in there, we'll buy more belts to replace the ones that are shredded and destroyed. So it, it's, these are not hard, fast numbers. These are estimated costs. So when we go out and look at the prices and try to find the lowest as we move along, we try to get what equipment we can with the budget that we have. <coughs> Thank you. I'll just follow up. Yeah, thank you. I mean, well, look at this. If we approve this, they're going to get. They're going to buy one. We're giving them eighty bucks. I think was, I'm sorry. We need to know. But the other thing, the same question on spit nets, hundred and fifty nine eighty a case. Are we buying one case, or is that your same answer that you don't? We'll know? buy one case now. If we run out, we have to buy another case later. And where would you get that money from? Well, if it's not in there, then I'd have to look at other fees and services or other supplies or look at some other place inside the budget. Follow up? No. Can you roll, Sam? Rep. Sam Keller. Well, as best I understand, and I haven't really done the math except just in my head, the list here adds to far less than $8,000. Correct. We're being asked to approve $8,000. And the point I think that Superintendent Jason, uh, Henry is trying to make is that we don't know how much some of these are. This is the cost of one. If we, need to, if we have enough money, you might buy a second belt. Um, if there's not money, it might not happen this year. So this, the summation of this is not the total amount. Um, it's just the components of it. Representative Muller. Thank you. Um, to go back to the discussion about the grant committee, um, I would just point out that if we had a system of grant review that had been acceptable to 
the commissioners and the delegation six months ago, nine months ago, a year ago, we wouldn't need legislation in order to have a system that worked. I think it's unfortunate that we need to mandate it in order to make it work. Thank you. Um, Superintendent, you wanted to... I was just okay. saying the grants that, just because we put in for them, that has not been accepted by the county either. It's not accepted until the money comes in and they review it again to make sure they're going to take the, um, the grants. Okay. Okay. I have... Uh, Representative yeah. Chandler. I, I don't really care what we're buying because I don't understand most of those things, obviously. The fact of the matter is, you have asked for $8,000 in the equipment line for this list. Now, and that's fine, but if you need more of these things, we need to know because right now, that's all you're getting is $8,000 and it covers one of quite a number of those items. Correct. And there is no more money Correct. to buy more than one. Again, that, again, those numbers that are there are representative of taking a quick look at what the prices are. We haven't gone out to bid and haven't looked at everything. We may be able to get more belts, might not be able to get more belts. I can raise the budget, but in trying to be fiscally responsible, trying to keep a number that is there and trying to work within it of getting what we can for equipment. If I raise another $4,000, then the delegation wants to look cut 4000 Trying to be very cost-effective as best as I can and get what we can for equipment. I'm sorry, but I guess I'm concerned. I don't, I'm not so concerned with the price of equal, I'm concerned, but it's how many you want of them. And I've, I'm not making myself clear on what you, you are indicating to me that you will be my, buying more or would like to buy more than one of some of these items. Mm -hmm. But you don't have enough money to buy more than one of some of these items. That's all I'm saying. So, but to follow up quickly, Representative Kennard. Yes, uh, well, I've done the math. The total is 5,302. I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, try to please, because we're not communicating. He's asking for $8,000. This is 5,302. Some of these may be a couple of things. They may buy three belts. They may buy an extra pistol. Depending on if the money is in the budget and the belt is worn out, they may buy some more. So this list does not add to 8,000. So if he needs two belts, it doesn't mean that the money's not there. Because uh, the line item. Uh, the I I just thank, you, thank, you, thank, you, thank you for your point. I just need to respond to that. I'm sorry. It does add up. It's, it's over $7,900. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Did I add right. up wrong? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my apologies. <laughs> I <laughs> learned it too fast. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. So, the Superintendent, if you want to consider that while we continue on with another item. Representative McCarthy, is something quick? Yeah, it's very quick. Um, uh, you know, with all due respect, that's not the way budgets work. It has down here four of this, four of this, six of this, two of that. If you buy more, and, and where it doesn't specify a number, the assumption is it's one. And if you buy more, technically you're exceeding an appropriation, and that's against the law. Thank you. <laughs> well, I would ask the question this way, Jason. Do you feel that the, the budget <coughs> is flexible enough that if you had to take from somewhere else, you would have that ability to buy the equipment you need to replace that's what, yes, I think the budget is flexible enough to, to take care of what we need. Not trying to be get everything we can in one year, trying to do slowly as we over time. Since I've gotten here, we've slowly tried to build up our equipment and the correct equipment and new equipment. Yes. Um, Jason, you have fun. Uh, what's your capacity right now? How many holds? How many holds right now? How many, how many, how many over there right now? Below seven, so that's more than what we normally have. Previous year was, the past couple of years, around sixty-two is your average. Do we? Do you have more staff or anything else that needs new equipment and stuff? The stuff's getting used more. Stuff's getting used. It, it, it always gets used. It's day, I mean, it's used every day, seven days a week, over and over again. Yeah, and so yeah, I guess replaced how is as we can. And some has been old, still old equipment. I mean, we're still every year replacing it. Could you talk just quickly about your revenue from last year to this year? Has that gone up as well? Revenue, if we haven't got the revenue, but we went from, <coughs> we made $242,000 in revenue last year. Over and the, above expenses? Well, jail cost $3.5 million, but. <laughs> <laughs> but, but from when I started here, $30,000 of revenue to yep. last year, $242,000 in revenue, I think we've done okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, so the line we've been spending this time on is 097 at $8,000. Um, do you have further 
No, I didn't. Okay. If I could, yes. Um, and where is this uh, ozone laundry system going to go? What line? One nine seven. <coughs> so that needs to be raised by whatever that amount is if we approve it. The amount would be twenty one thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars. Nine hundred and thirty. Sorry, 97. Right. Could you just round it up? <laughs> <laughs> Representative Mullen. Can I get another bite out of the belly? Superintendent, do you have a question? <laughs> just that uh, comment. Line, line 6100, old uh, 69. We also took $3,000 out of that line to reduce that line down by 3000 Because if we get the OZO system in now, we wouldn't have to continue paying for the sheets out for us a year. That would still leave plenty of money to buy the sheets up front. So we're going to reduce that line by three thousand dollars to also since we'll be doing the ozone system. So overall, the total budget, overall, with putting the ozone system in and the reductions, is two thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars above what the commissioners and we put in to the delegation um, after these cuts. Sorry, could you say that again, too, please? Two thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars more than the bottom line budget you have now because of reductions that we did in other lines. And, and, am I, may, I, and may I say that the uh, bottom line now that you have, that the commissioners authorized was 3,636,543, is that correct? I want to make sure we're having the right number in front of us. No, I don't know. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. We have Do we have a, a tally for where we are with this number right now? <coughs> Three six three. The total, you mean? Please. With the additions? Yes. Three million six hundred thirty-four thousand three thirteen. Say that again, sir. Yeah. I think three million six thirty-four three thirteen. Is that with the two thousand yes. nine hundred and seventy? Yes. And what was the original number that the commissioners had set? Three million six hundred thirty-one thousand three forty-three. I think. Subcommittee. Well, that's the subcommittee's right. Yes. The commissioner was at three million five eight three seven one eight. That's what I have here. Right. Representative, come on. Yes, my question would be: um, Do we need a separate motion to accept or decline the ozone line, or how are we going to how do we accomplish that? We can just. We're, we're just going to if if okay. we're in agreement, I would I would say we're going to just move forward and that it's included in there. They can they can. Added into it, we'll be voting on a bottom line number. I, I, go ahead. Then I would um, propose that in the motion it states to add the ozone <coughs> system, so everybody understands when they're voting they're adding that ozone system. I suspect you'll be making the motion. <laughs> For any further questions. Representative, could I, I just want to apologize to you, Representative Chandler, for my hey. error. Yes, for my math error. I want to apologize for my math error. Oh. I did it too quickly. Thank you. Don't need to apologize. <laughs> well, I, all right. I make enough of them. Is there is there is there more contained in this budget that the um, the union contract is that part of is that part of my salary line that's here? Should we discuss that next? That's been passed out to the uh, delegation. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. So it was passed out to the delegation. I know that I had seen it. Uh, questions on it, Representative McCarthy? Yes, I, I, I read the contract, in fact, I made a copy of it, and, and, and I extrapolated the figures out. And from what I understand, it, it amounts to a $30 a week um, increase in salary for the 20, I think it's 24 uh, individuals. $30 a week? Yeah, about $30. Can you give me the figures on the line item of the work by somebody? But, but that's already included in this, isn't it? It's, in, it's already in the budget. I mean, the, the final amount is... That's it's, all, it's included. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's in the budget. Yeah, 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 it's So, I just, I just want to follow up. So, delegation, subcommittee, I, I heard from... Representative Schmidt was in agreement, didn't have an issue with it. I've heard Representative McCarthy. Um, any further questions on the union contract? Okay, so I guess we're ready. Is there anything else that needs 
Superintendent, we're all we're there. No, <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would move to uh, accept, have the delegation accept the jail budget of $3,634,313. Thirteen? Second is that to include? To oh, and also in this, in this vote includes the acceptance and purchase and installation of the ozone laundry system. And this list of equipment? That's it's in that's and, a, and the list yeah. of equipment and the list of equipment items. Second. All right, and there was we have a second. Um, any further discussion? And the union contract. <coughs> and the union contract. Thank you. And could you read that back after? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> um, how many years is the contract? Contract is a. Two. Three years. Three. Well done. To accept a jail budget of three million six hundred and thirty four thousand three hundred thirteen dollars to also include the acceptance, purchase, and installation of an ozone laundry system, list of provided provided list of new equipment, and a three year union contract. All right. Does anyone, I, I'm going to propose a voice vote, unless anyone objects. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Can, are you still here? Can I ask a question about revenue? On sure. The jail? Um, I, I, I mentioned to you before, I think last week, there was something in writing that I received, I believe, from the commissioners that jail revenue last year went up something like 400% because of the borders, the, the number of borders, but that doesn't, I can't find that in the, in the, the revenue figures. Well, we, we should budget it, yeah, 60, uh, 100, or for 6400031, we were uh, the revenue was 50,000, moved up to 86,500 on borders. Uh, total revenue for this year predicted 115,300, which is up from last year. But again, this is also subject to other counties having numbers to give us for borders. So, thank you, uh, Representative Fidelli. Uh, yes, the sheet I'm looking at. Um, February 24th uh, shows the border revenue for uh, 2016 was uh, almost $224,000. Correct. Okay. I, I thought I heard a different number. Just oh, for 16. Yes. Okay. But the Go ahead. Uh, but the revenue for this year is only going to be 86,500. Correct. Is that uh, less borders? I. Again, that's subject to that I don't know. It, it's contingent on the other jails if they have overcapacity and we're able to take them in. So very conservative on the number to make sure we meet this revenue and not inflate it. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. What's your best educated guess? 86,500. 86,500. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. We'll take we'll take up uh, revenues afterwards. Uh, if there's something else we need to know, uh, we can inquire when the time comes. I'd like to move on to uh, the nursing home, and um, I'll turn the discussion over to uh, Representative Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Before we start, I'd like to thank uh, Ken and Chuck for their work on this, and of course, Howie uh, for his and his assistant there, Paul, uh, the commissioners, and most important, uh, committee members, and most important, the employees who do a wonderful job. I think we came up with a very good uh, budget. A lot of things we agreed with the commissioners, and we've made some adjustments. So if you go to page, you know, yeah, 31. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. All right. I'm flipping too many pages here. I'm sorry. Page 30, and we will go through the list. All right. On page 30, 
Uh, the first one is a new position going down to overtime is overtime. So we go to the position on salary for administration. That includes the new part-time position that was added in. Because remember, all the paperwork is moving in more efficiency in uh, a person doing the admitting of people. They are more efficient, so they can get people in sooner. Can you get the line, the line number on it, please? Sure, 09. Oh nine. Okay. Uh, minor issues. You have a question? Yes. Uh, if, I, if I might, I, I thought that the new position was a benefits, part-time benefits coordinator. Yes, you're all correct. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I don't know if it's appropriate at this time to get into the, uh, the payroll system, but I think it has a bearing on this new position. Had the benefits, I forgot that was benefits position. In essence, would potentially save money. It would make everything move along quicker for new employees coming in. They would know what they need, what they don't need. Things are doubling up. Uh, so I, would, I would just hold that until after we're done. Okay, so exactly. We don't get bogged down in the budget. Right, because uh, I would we maybe like to revisit back. that position when we talk about the payroll system. You can always go back and adjust yep. it if you uh, Thank have you. to read for Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we're going down. Social Security goes up with the salaries and everything else. Uh, medical insurance uh, went down slightly, so uh, a slight decrease in what they anticipated the cost was going to be. Uh, we're agreeing with the commissioners going down. And our first uh, new equipment. That's uh, one that everybody loves. And on here are somewhere in my list of new equipment, which we have. It includes, it includes, it is here, somewhere, it's a single sheet. But I have a system here helping me find what, is, what I need. It includes some beds that are needed. Uh, we've been adding beds as we go along, as you recall. These are special lifts and everything that are needed. Um, I'm trying to, I'm sorry, it's in my pile, thanks. And uh, let's start up with this at the top of administration. New security lights, better lighting in the parking lot, putting in LED fixtures, etc. That's about fifteen thousand dollars. Exterior doors that were on metal, uh, better security. Basically, exterior changing the lock system to cards versus keys, and that's another fifteen thousand dollars. There was money in this for a pavilion, which we cut out. I think it was 250000 and we felt that was needed at this time. Dietary, these are all things that they have put on there that they see a need for, and we accepted what they had with one exception, we did cut one item, and that's on my other list, but it wasn't a great amount. Yes, sir. Um, can, we uh, can we talk about dietary equipment in dietary? dietary I think it's kind of confusing people. Agree, this is their dietary it's online. Okay, Sorry, we're jumping that, you're right, we're jumping out of Thank you. I was going over the new yep, I, Thank I, you. I got it. Yep, I see what you're saying. All right, going down the list here. Anything else on page 30 that somebody has a... The only other change that I recall is on education and conferences, we reduce that by a thousand. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, bottom, unless there's something else you need to move. Thank you. Um, could you remind me um, about the uh, the uh, the reason for the increase, the tripling of the cost of education and conferences for administration? There are new uh, people on board and training things. They get benefit from the training that they go to. Um, they feel that the return is there from the conferences, etc. that we go to. And it's an ongoing thing. And sometimes they don't use it, sometimes they do. Representative McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I can remember six years ago when we went through this before, where overtime, just for nurses, was, was more than $1,000 a day. 
and now it's quite a bit more than that. In fact, there's a $60,000 increase from, from last year of usage. Um, okay, John. You're right. 31. Overtime for nurses overtime? Page 30. Um, page 30. 31. Oh, it's dietary. I'm sorry. Mr. No, no, yes. No, no, no. Uh, hold, hold on a moment, if I could, Representative. Uh, I, I came in late, but I believe they've reviewed page 30, and we will get to 31. Are you ready to take that conversation but before you do? Mr. Chairman, do you have well, a question? I, well, yeah, I just thought I'd make a motion to accept page 30. Okay, let's let's do that then. Um, I would move $2,982,351. Second. Or, Second, moved and seconded um, for the delegation. We are we are looking at the bottom line on page thirty of thirty two million nine eight two three five one. Am I correct? All right. And we it's been moved and seconded. Are there any further questions? Nine five one. Three, five, three, five. <coughs> uh, seeing none, all those in favor will uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Are those opposed? Nay. Motion passes unanimous. We're on nursing home private service, page 31. <coughs> we agree with the commissioners on most everything here. Um, we thought the numbers were strong, and I'm not sure we just took one minor thing for $5,000, which we went down, and that had to do with the new equipment. Um, I believe this, Representative McCarthy, are you, are you satisfied with where we are at this point? Okay. Representative Chandler? Yeah, I would move $1,582,710. Is that two or? Uh -huh. Got it. Uh, has been moved by Chandler, seconded. Evelini, um, one million five eight two seven one zero. Do you have a question on dietary? Mm -hmm. Okay. Seeing no further questions, um, all those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Those uh, negative would be. It's unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> I lost my trash. <laughs> All right, is there something else on nursing home? We're on page 32. Thank you. We are in agreement with the commissioners on this. The page would be okay. The uh, nursing home items, which would be line 97. Yeah, we're on there. Uh, they have put in some requests in here. Uh, the numbers do not agree with the numbers on here. Uh, this is the list I have says twenty-three thousand. One of the books says twenty-five. There's a discrepancy of two thousand dollars there. The left. How we explain that? Three beds. We've been buying beds uh, a couple at a time, and uh, where possible, we buy used ones. We can save quite a bit. New headboards, footboards with the controls are here. Uh, bariatric bed. I'm not sure what that is. Headboards and footboards with controls. The controls are the newer beds, and it makes it easier to just hit a button and move up and down and all that stuff. Soft touch assist rails. I'm assuming those are, I don't know what they are. Right. Soft touch. And lifts. The lifts are something, again, we have more and more uh, patients that are now, residents, I'm sorry, that are here and with more higher need cares, and they're uh, lift the patient up, or resident up, excuse me. And uh, it saves on injuries to an employee trying to help somebody because they lift them up. There's a question. Representative Chandler. Yeah, I guess it looks like some committee and others, the presented list total 23,404. So would that be a figure you would accept here for new equipment? Mr. <coughs> Representative Baller. Thank you. As I recall in the discussion in the subcommittee, um, as we heard also from the jail, that some of these things uh, might be less and some of them could be more. They have not gone out to bid, and we thought that 25000 was uh, not unreasonable uh, in that, number, in that uh, category. Okay. And uh, 
Uh, to just add on to that, when we order beds, um, we don't know how much shipping is going to be uh, because it comes in on on a tractor trailer. So um, that's what the the additional twelve hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars is for. Thank you. I just I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I won't, won't believe that point, but I'm, I'm saying it's match. With three months into a budget, it seems like we ought to know how much these things cost. That's all. So thank you. I'll go with twenty-five. Yes. Yeah. 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 We. Approve the $2,500 because these figures do not include shipping costs and because these figures are estimated. Particularly when we buying items used. Thank you very so much. Okay. Any further questions on this? On this, or the are there <coughs> more discussion on page 32? I'll move five seven two seven nine six one. Representative Butler moves five million seven twenty seven nine six one. Seconded by Representative Marsh. Um, does everyone understand where we are? All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion is unanimous. Questions? Um, I was just trying to follow Representative McCarthy's earlier comment about overtime and wanted to know if it fell within that. I was but reading the wrong line. Oh, you're okay. Okay, thank you. On page 33, Environmental Services. Okay. Um, Please. We're going on to this for the salaries over here, and there was some switching of uh, this now. It includes housekeeping and laundry, which previously had a separate page. You come across that, which have been zeroed out. So those positions have moved and moved to this category. So that explains the increase there. Uh, Social Security went up as a result, retirement, etc. cetera. Um, trying to see some big changes. Uh, contracted fees and services, there's been, again, switch of responsibilities. This includes uh, waste, air conditioning type of things have been moved. So there have been adjustments in where things are shown in different areas which they were previously built toward. Uh, we'll go down, they've been saved on the electric expenses. Uh, we projected the savings in electric expenses because since the original budget has gone out, if they didn't have a better uh, choice. The propane has gone up. Uh, slightly, and you'll notice also that the pellets have gone down. Propane's cheaper than the pellets, so we keep decreasing the number of pellets as long as we have a good price on the propane. So it's more cost efficient. Uh, other than that, everything is the same with what the commissioners has suggested. Thank you. Questions? Frederick yes. McCarthy? Excuse me, we have a question here next to me. The care of grounds down to $5,000, and I would have to ask how we'd explain that, if you don't mind. Bob, let's see, so we took $17,500, transferred it up uh, for, for waste management, transferred it up to 029. Uh, just line to, switch. Yeah, line switch to put it in contract with these and services. Okay. <clears throat> Carthy, did you have a question? Yes, uh, <clears throat> on line 013, retirement expense, uh, over the last year's usage, it went up about 60%. The age of some of the people that are involved in some of this, some of it is moving people around, especially with the moving these different departments over. So you had the retirement uh, originally in housekeeping and laundry, etc. So everything's been moved over to the state. Salaries doubled in that President Marsh, you have comment. Yeah, at the subcommittee, we were presented a spreadsheet showing the totals of the three pages that were eliminated to make this one page. And the totals actually came out to be slightly less with the consolidation, but it was very confusing. And if we go into that, we'll be here for a very long time. Thank you. Representative Chandler. Uh, yes, I might. Thank you. Uh, new equipment? I don't see a uh, list here anyway. Laundry carts. Pardon? Laundry carts. How many? Ten thousand dollars worth. <laughs> four large, That's four small. Pardon? Four large and four small. Four large, four small. Further question? Um, yes, Representative Link. Um, we asked back uh, last, I think last year, that we could consolidate some of these departments into environmental services in order just to have one budget. Uh, would make our uh, budgeting process a little easier, make Bob's life a little easier, and make finance a little easier. Um, I think they've done that, and we'd, I'd like to thank them for 
Thank you. Are we ready for a motion on this line? Is there further discussion? Mr. Chairman, I move $1,285,628 so. for environmental services. Thank you. It's been moved, seconded by Butler. Questions? What is the bottom line now? I believe it's still the same. Same thing? Yeah. One, two, eight, five, six, two, eight. Yep. If you're in favor, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. Pages 34 and 35 are easy. Those are the two that were moved over to environmental services. So they're zeroed out. On page 36, nursing home fund. And we made a slight decrease of a thousand dollars. Sorry, yeah, thousand dollars there. Thank you. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, page 36. Um, was there further comment on that, Representative Nelson? No. Okay. Questions? No. Okay. Motion. Okay. Physicals were the one that we downed. Uh, move ninety nine thousand three hundred. Second. Move. Moved by Chandler, seconded by Adelaide. 99,300. Any questions? If you're in favor of that, you will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. We're on to page 37. Again, we come in agreement with the commissioners what they presented. You'll see the difference on line physical therapy, therapy part B. And this is reflects it started later in the year, so it reflects. All right. Well, I have to commit uh, they ask how a contractor issue, is that correct? The, the we we had salaries for the first four months of last year and that department <coughs> the salary department was deleted for the balance of the year. Thank you. Motion to accept one three five seven five one. Second. Motion's been made for one three five seven five one, seconded by Butler. Uh, questions? All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Passage unanimously. On page 38, we are in agreement with the commissioners on this particular area. Any questions on page 38? Bottom line 401824. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded by Camo 401824. Any further questions? Just for clarification, we just they consolidated the bus driver and into the salaries. That's why it's been zeroed out. Thanks for the question. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. Page 39. We are in agreement with the commissioners. The numbers they have listed. Thank you. Bottom line, 133980. So moved. Moved by McCarthy, seconded by sure. Lani. Um, further question? All those in favor of 133980, page 39, signified by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Uh, motion passes unanimously. On page 40, we're in agreement with the commissioners. <coughs> I show a bottom line number of 274950. So moved. Moved by McCarthy, second by the line. Uh, 274950. If you're in favor of that motion, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. Page 41 shows the interest and the bond payment. And we have a grand total for the nursing home fund. And the total of the nursing home, uh, home fund is 14423674. Is that in the form of a motion? Yes, so, it is, sir. Uh, seconded by Butler. Um, questions? Oops, excuse me. Yes, yeah, Representative Chairman. And I don't care, but do you need to do the interest expense and long term debt separately? They're, they're their own. I don't care. No, it, it, I don't care. It goes to the bottom line. They used to be separate, but now they're part of the, the same fund. 
Okay. Okay, so we're still we're still moving 14. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're in favor of that motion, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. Which then brings us to, if I'm correct, a grand total uh, on the bottom of page 41, $30,505,433. dollars i am not sure. There's been some changes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we will hold on that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So that's for the whole budget. Yeah. Okay, we will hold. We'll hold on that. Make a note. We'll come back to that. Can, well, me, yes, Representative Chandler. Well, can someone go figure that? Well, we still have to do uh, White Horse. We still have to uh, look at the uh, the DPW budget. So oh, I'm sorry. More I apologize. Okay. And we, and we have to do the, the capital too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Capital? Did you say capital? capital. capital. <laughs> so um, hold on revenue for later. Yes, we're we're, we're going to go into it next uh, after after let's let's discuss White Horse at this point in time. And that is under uh, page twenty-three. Page 23, under Regional Appropriations, line 89, um, it was um, the Commissioner's uh, budget for $75,000. The subcommittee came out at $75,000. We had discussion two meetings past. Uh, Representative Butler has brought through a um, motion to reduce it to 50,000. Yeah, reduce it to 50000 and if someone could just remind me where we left that, did we just end the conversation? Yeah, we take it to the table. 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 All right, do we want to bring that off the table for discussion? So moved. Representative Butler moves to Second. bring it off the table, seconded by uh, Cordelli. Um, all those in favor of removing it from the table signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Um, it has been brought off. Representative Butler. Could we uh, start by asking uh, the commissioners to talk about the MOU? Thank you. You want to do that, Kenny? You want to do You can certainly do it, Kenny. Uh, what we decided was that um, because it is a new uh, endeavor that we would do in quarterly reports from them, that we would ask them to um, give us a, a detailed report as to the clients that they were working with, the towns they came from, their age, um, with our funding, how our funding was used in their drug abuse for their IOP. Um, it's pretty, um, I don't know if you have copies of it, but it's detailed uh, in number five, the responsibilities that they would um, uh, tell us exactly where the money, the funding was going and who was being helped. Also, the cost of uh, the expending of the salaries, the transportation, the equipment purchase, etc. And down in E would be a quarterly breakdown of how they had contacted the northern half of the county and um, what efforts they had made up in the northern part. This is a little more than we do with normal um, services, but it's because it's a new service and we thought if we kept on a quarterly basis with them, we would uh, see exactly where the money was going, how it was benefiting the people in the community, and we would uh, just have a little more awareness of what was going on. The rest of it is pretty general stuff. Thank you. Uh, questions by the delegation? Do we have a signed copy? We're not going to sign it until we have money to 
put in. If you notice, that the amount of the money is not in here yet because we didn't know how much money they were going for from the process. Further questions? And uh, Representative Nelson, then I'll come back to. I have a two part question. Please. One, do you envision this being a uh, yearly request? It is one year request right now. Do you foresee it being each year them asking for money? Yes. I would expect so, yes. And my second question, Please. Chairman, uh, would this be better served by asking the towns? So, for example, if a town has a bigger problem, they would donate a higher portion rather than, that, than a county coming up with this 50000 Each town could, they could ask money from each town. Well, I think that it is a county-wide issue for that. That's why they came. They were starting out going to towns, and then they came to the county, and we, we told them uh, it, it's either one or the other. Either go to the towns or go to the county, and they said that they would still come to the county. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Hounsel. Yeah, uh, I want to talk about the uh, draft uh, MOU in front of you. We took the time between uh, Representative Butler's uh, motion in today to uh, take a look at what was the draft of the uh, previous MOU, and uh, we saw that this was an opportunity for us to begin a, a better process uh, of entering into these agreements. Uh, you'll see that there is and you should treat this as a draft because obviously you have to raise the, uh, determine the appropriation of the number, and that has to be in here somewhere. Uh, but some of the things that we're doing here under general provisions are uh, important for administration. Uh, it gives the county further security. Uh, the process uh, that I prefer, and I think this represents, uh, and I think the commission is a supporter of this as well, for going forward, is MOUs uh, should not be signed uh, until after the money has been determined by you. And furthermore, it should not be signed until after it's been returned by the uh, party that we're doing business with. In other words, if this is all in agreement with the delegation, and then with the, uh, with the uh, White Horse, then it would come back to the commissioners for final uh, approval and, and implementation. Uh, that's a better way to go forward. Uh, with all MOUs, and also uh, contracts, union contracts. We shouldn't be signing those until uh, there's money behind them. Uh, as far as going to the towns versus the county, that decision was made. Uh, there is a couple ways to skin this cat, but I, I would say with the opioid crisis, that this is uh, more a county than a, uh, than a municipality issue. Uh, I think the uh, provision uh, E, under responsibility 5E, uh, we will track to make sure that this money, which is county money, is being used to serve all the people in the county. Uh, that, that's our hope. Thank you, Representative Chandler. And also Thank you. Uh, well, I, I don't favor this, I guess, any amount for a number of reasons. One of which, and I didn't find out all the details, but there's one of these type of situations operating successfully up in Conway, I think, now, with a house. They're doing it all. The best of my knowledge, they haven't asked the county or anyone else for any money. They've done it all somehow on their own. The budget for this agency last year was $141,000, $121,000. This year they're proposing $2.4 million. Nothing from the state. I, I, I guess... Well, there is money from the state. No, if the gentleman from Wires could respond to that, please. Yes. We are. The, the budget you're seeing there, when we did it at the beginning of the year, is to open up, in addition to outpatient, which is what we're talking about, a residential program. So that budget was set up to put in a 28-day plus uh, long-term low-intensity housing. We're working on that. We are working with the state. That's a separate piece from what this is. What we're talking about here is for intensive outpatient in regular outpatient services as well as peer recovery. The place in North Conway is more of a peer recovery support. They don't have late acts and they don't do treatment. They do sober living. I think they have limited eight bed sober living and they just do, um, you know, I mean, they do a service, but they are nowhere near as comprehensive as what we're doing. We have M late acts on staff. We have uh, 
regular ADAX on staff, we have recovery support workers, we have certified recovery support workers, they don't have all that. We have it here. We're the only place in the county that, that has that at this level here. So we treated um, registered data collected 120 clients over the last year. Um, so you, know, you, just, you say we're new, we've been at this for three years. So we're up to 120 clients this year, um, plus probably another 60 or more that we treated, we brought in and we sent out to residential programs. We sent to Friendship House, we sent to the Pavilion, we sent to Catholic Medical Center, we sent to um, the Manchester um, Serenity Place. So we sent them out because we don't have residential here. So the two and a half million is to get residential here so we don't have to send people all over the state. 99% of our clients are from within this county right here. So uh, we're not bringing people from outside of the county. We, we, we have at least uh, probably 20% or more of our clients that don't have insurance and we take them. So they're not paying us. So we're bringing them in and treating them for no charge. So now you have to ask yourself, of almost 200 clients that we've seen over the last year, where would we be if we weren't doing this? All right. If we weren't here, what would the numbers look like? Yes, Thank sir. You. Right. Jeff Chandler. So I just finished by Chris. Please. Thank you. Um, I'll come to you. I'm, I, we could get into this all day. Uh, to my way of thinking, it's something that is, hasn't, in my opinion, proven itself yet, so we shouldn't be funding it. And I will say that of the three towns that I represent, zero people come from there. I cannot justify $50,000 when at least in my three towns, and especially the, the whole northern part of the county, is getting no benefit from this. But thank you. Thank you. Representative McCarthy, and then I'll come to you. Well, I have a couple of things. One, I think coming to the county, the entities coming to the county for funding, I think is the proper thing to do. And that way, they get a fair share of every municipality within the county. Um, you know, some counties or some municipalities might not have problem people, but the others do. So we're all helping each other out that way by getting the money through county. The other thing is, um, I, I would like to know, uh, the memorandum, I'm very satisfied with that, I think you did a great job with it, and I would like to know, the, the commissioners originally proposed and approved $75,000. Do you stand by that? Yes, we Well, the number we got originally approved by the commissioners with 75. That's Do you correct. stand by that? Yes. I don't see any reason to change it. Representative Marshall. Yes. I wanted to say for the record that last week Representative Schmidt and I went over to Belknap County to uh, visit their program where they intensive outpatient services and, and were very satisfied and, and learned a lot from that experience. Uh, can you give us some breakdown uh, by town as to where your 200 clients were for the last year? I think that would be very helpful to the discussion. We, we can. I don't have it. We do. I don't have the data. We had it. Uh, we should have 76. Uh, back when we did this, it was 76 in September when we applied. So um, you should have a copy of the we do. original. Yeah. And that number's gone up pretty significant <coughs> since we submitted this one by town, too. So, yeah. Unfortunately, we didn't uh, keep the data as accu accurately as we are now. We're starting to save all screenings that come in, so um, that number has gone up quite a bit. Thank you. Um, and our, just so you know, our services and our outpatient, uh, I know the, the term IOP and uh, outpatient are used interchangeably. It's two different things. So we have an outpatient program. The IOP is within that. That's an intensive program. That's nine hours a week of group, one hour of individual, and they have to go to three to five support groups a week. Very similar to Nathan Brody, which is what you're talking about in Belknap County, I believe. Um, it's very, very similar to the, it's the same programming that they're doing. Thank you, Representative Butler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. um, my support for this uh, uh, request, uh, knowing that it was just um, uh, a focus on the southern part of the county, is that there was no service in the southern part of the county <coughs> until Whitehorse uh, uh, chose to uh, focus in Ossipee and begin to uh, offer services in the southern part of the county. The northern part of the county programs and uh, 
providers certainly need support, um, but they are a little more mature than Whitehorse. And so therefore, it made sense to me to look at providing support since Whitehorse came to the county, uh, for one, but also because um, this is, although uh, three years uh, in, uh, and a nascent program, um, and I think uh, needs and deserves support. However, the reason that I said, uh, made the proposal to reduce the uh, amount requested, even beyond what uh, was initially requested by the commissioners, is that I think that there are lots of things that this program could do better, and their basic kind of business uh, savvy uh, planning, uh, financial reports that are more clear, more successful, more uh, targeted. Um, uh, and um, so I think that we should support, but I think we should support more uh, conservatively, and that's why I requested the reduction. Um, I can see next year for some kind of collaborative uh, effort throughout the county, so that it's not just Whitehorse, that it's um, all of the uh, addiction uh, services coming to the county and saying, you know, we, we uh, assess that this is our need uh, beyond what we're getting and what the state is providing, and would you consider it? But I think this is reasonable targeting at this point. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, Whitehorse came to us uh, seeking uh, um, uh, someone to help, and and the delegation was most helpful last year when when they uh, approved thirty thousand for our uh, new jail programming consultant, which has been a huge success. Um, it costs our LADAC person about $60,000 is what, is what we pay our LADAC. Um, $75,000 request, in my mind, isn't a lot of money um, to help some of the families in Carroll County who's being, who are being affected by this. I don't come from Carroll County, I come from Stratford County, but there, it, it has affected me personally. So, um, this is a serious problem. $50,000 is very, it, it's a good amount. But $75,000 would do a lot more. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. The uh, motion, motion before the delegation is to reduce, is to fund Whitehorse Addiction Center at $50,000 from the 75. Moved by Butler, is there a second? Madam Umberger, or Madam Umberger, Chair, <laughs> Representative Umberger seconded it when we uh, brought okay. it before us. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's that mean? I, I, I think we should, last time. We, we, should, we should have a second. Let's just, let's just go for a second. Is there a second for this? I'll, I'll second it for it. Right okay. Seconded by Evelyn. Discussion. So, discussion? If you're if you're in favor of the motion to uh, fund Whitehorse at fifty thousand dollars, I wonder if we need a uh, roll call. On this. Please, no, please. 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 Roll call. Roll. Let's 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 go first. Oh, question. Inquiry. Yeah. If we don't pass this, does it then revert to the seventy-five thousand? We would be we would be open for further motion. Got it. Thank you. No. Okay. I just tried to vote. I, yeah. I, would, I would like that. Uh, Representative Butler, are you upset? I'm sorry. Are you set? We're going to go to a vote. Uh, I am set, but I don't have a... Uh, we're we're, we're going to go for a vote, uh, voice great. vote and see where we go. Thank you. If you're in favor of the motion for $50,000, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. 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 Nays, raise your hand. Majority five, right. The motion fails. Is there a second motion? I, I make a motion to go with the original figure proposed by the um, commissioners of seventy-five thousand. Second. Second by Marsh. Um, motion now is at seventy-five thousand dollars. If you're in favor of the motion, the original amount of seventy-five. Discussion? 
there is discussion. Just one question. Please. Are the commissioners in favor of the $75,000 if this was to pass? Yes. 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 Unanimous? Yes. yes. <laughs> May I also make a small statement to... Uh, not a statement. No. If it's a response to a question, but that's, well, that would be... to it. Mr. Butler, uh, Representative Butler. By putting them on a quarterly report system, both financially and what they're doing with their clients, it's kind of trying will help them to get those records kind of thank, stay thank, together. Thank you, thank you for the comment. We're in, we're in voting mode. They, um, Representative Nelson, question. Uh, when we vote on this, I, know I myself would rather go town by town. Okay. And so my no is not against doing this. It's doing it against doing it on That's the no problem. We, we, will, we will go. Which is what you say this. Okay. If, okay, so we're back to the original uh, appropriation, which is $75,000 for uh, White Horse Addiction Center. If you're in favor of the motion, you will signify now by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, it will be nay. 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 Nays, raise your hand. Motion, motion passes. Uh, record the uh, nays, if you would, please. I saw right in 100. Okay. It's funny. All right. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Would it be inappropriate to have it in the record as to why we know or no? No. If you want, if you want to submit something in writing, we'll, we'll include that in the... Uh, in the I wouldn't want people to think. Right. Okay. I just... I, no. No, I, no, my, and, I, and I'll tell you mine and we'll move on. Um, I'm in favor of the service. I think Butler's uh, request to reduce to $50,000 as a first year request was reasonable and I was in favor of that. So, Mr. Chairman, I move $292,000 to replace the um, line item appropriation for regional appropriations. Second. Okay, so we have a motion for two ninety two, two hundred ninety two thousand dollars for regional appropriations. Been moved and seconded by Butler. Um, discussion. Just clarification. I want to make sure that includes the seventy five. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you're in favor of that motion, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 And if you're opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimous. Thank you. You're Representative McCarthy. Yeah, a couple of you made motion, uh, mention of why you might have voted no. I'd like to make my reason for voting yay, and that is last year in this state almost 480 people died from drug overdoses. Seventy thousand or seventy-five thousand dollars is a small amount that we can save just one life with that money. That's why I voted yes. Thank you, Representative McCarthy. Um, I, I would rather not go around the table with why we voted the way we did. I think it was a reasonable request to uh, Representative Nelson when he made it on, on the negative. And if you have if you have strong feeling for or if you have justification for no, then I'd ask that you just submit a statement and we'll make it part of the record. Okay. I think, Mr. Chairman, on the bottom line, I would stand. I get a total reduction of five thousand one hundred and ten dollars uh, with all the pluses and minuses that we went through. So. Mm -hmm. we we get still have one more right yeah, we'll Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, we're yeah, still working yeah. on it. Yeah, let's let's. Uh, no, I keep trying to thank you. Can't <laughs> stand anymore. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'm not going to make it. Uh, we should. Uh, we need to discuss Hale's Hale's location. Uh, no, he's got to, we have to okay, do right. Yeah, we're still going to do, uh, we still have to do capital, we still have to do uh, DPW. Is Hale's location, though, part of the expenditures? No. Oh, okay, all right, thank you. All right, the um, DPW, uh, we had removed $10,000, um, and I know that the commissioners have looked at that. Had, had the, have the commissioners come up with a change in, in item lines that they suggested at this point? You yeah. <laughs> have. Do you have a copy of that? I don't know. 
before before we take that, Representative, had, have I, had we made suggestion or looked at the suggestions that we have? I, I made suggestions, but I want to hear what Ken has to say. Okay, thank you, Lord Commissioner. Please. Um, we we have uh, ten thousand dollars in reduction, and there are the following. Line 027, water testing. Oh, sorry, page 15. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, it would be water testing. Uh, $9,000 is recommendation. We would, we would drop that down to $8,000. That would be a $1,000 reduction. Uh, the next line down. Is uh, supplies 029 it's at 4500 drop it to $4,500 reduction. Uh, the next line is 068 advertising, it's uh, 2500 uh, We dropped it down to $1,500, $1,000. And the, the last item on this page is the chemicals. It went from uh, 1500 to a thousand, which is a five hundred dollar reduction. So on this first page is three thousand dollars. Page sixteen uh, on the generator expense, we're taking five thousand dollars off of that, bringing it down to seven thousand dollars. So the, the bottom line is two seventeen one three seven. Representative Kenner. Uh, the question is, how do you anticipate the decrease in the water testing? Where does that come from functionally? Uh, it's coming from a uh, $1,000 uh, water test. No, but I mean, how, how are you going to do that? If there's a certain yeah. need for water testing, which is mandated. Yeah, last year cost some Right. Yeah. Can I speak to that? Representative Marshall. Yeah, I looked into that, Jerry. They they uh, are continuing, and that's still above the actual for last year. But there was a request, which was considered optional, to test for some of the uh, uh, chemicals that have been leaching out of some of the landfills down south in Colorado. We don't have any landfills up here. It makes no sense to spend money for uh, something that right. we have no reason to expect. Well, that was the explanation we were given uh, a couple weeks ago for why it went from nine, uh, ten, ten to nine. nine. So right. my question was, how does it then go from nine to eight? We do. All of our, all of our water testing, we do it when we're supposed to do it, um, and there's there, there's a thousand dollar reduction is what. If if Rep. Uh, Ken, that's only eight thousand dollars. I'm sorry. Um, in the generator, it's seven thousand. I sorry, I said five it's seven. So it's down to five thousand. Oh, down to five thousand. Yeah. Thank you. Generator on page okay. 16. Thank you. Further question? Representative Cardelli. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would just ask about the uh, reduction in the generator uh, <coughs> because we were given um, a package at, I think, our first subcommittee with all the needed uh, mm -hmm. generator repairs and all, and I think that this was the amount um, requested uh, for repairs to these generators. So I'm just wondering well, if it, it was thirty eight hundred dollars to repair the this generator, I believe. Um. If if I could, Bob, are you are you okay with where we're at, at this point? Provided I know they're your bosses, else, but provided nothing else breaks on it, we're good to go. <laughs> Thank you. So if it was only if we only needed thirty one hundred this year, why did, why was it budgeted at twelve thousand? We were um, last year, as you know, we um, we were going to do the, uh, uh, the the transfer switch. This is what I'm told. We we're going to do the transfer switch. We had uh, a major malfunction in this generator, which cost us um, a substantial amount of money. Um, and we repaired the generator, uh, and therefore we couldn't do the transfer switch. 
Uh, at the end of the year, money was found in, in, in some of the other generators' uh, lines, and so that money was encumbered to do the transfer switch. So we, we had, when we made the budget, we, we had put the transfer switch in the budget. Um, and come to find out in the end of February, I guess, we, we, we had just left it in there for some reason. Follow up. So this was just a, a clerical error, or was this budget overestimated? No, it was a clerical error. We, we truly were, were going to do the transfer switch this year. Thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Motion by so Representative Chandler so to. I think the bottom line would be 217, 137. Yep. Mm -hmm. We already accepted that. Did we vote for that before? Because I didn't write it down. Last week you voted to adopt the bottom line. Is this vote to accept the adjustments to each line? Correct. Correct. The, so going forward, should this motion pass? The commissioners will have a determined line item budget under DPW that equals the, the sum right. total. Thank you. Okay. So just to clarify, the the bottom line is 217.137 with the adjustments uh, suggested and accepted by the delegation um, in those uh, above reference lines. Second. Okay. Uh, moved and seconded. Any further question? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor of the bottom line, 217137, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. Is there something else left in the expenditure? Yes. yes. Capital expenditures. Uh, 9400. Which page? Page 27. 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, 26, do we have further written documentation for that? I sent you an email with the attachment on it that described the Kronos payroll system. And with the cost. That. I got a copy of it too, and, and you were on there. And it was your right at email address. It was a hot mail. Okay. I, I didn't see that, but I, that's and that's fine. We can get a copy of that. The, um, so that does, that described what the Kronos was going to do. I think our questions were, had we sufficiently investigated why we needed to spend 100000 and with true certainty that we couldn't make the ACS system uh, function uh, in the direct need for the Kronos. Was any of that in that attachment? No. And I will answer all nine Let's of those questions. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> what do you have? What uh, Representative Codelli posed nine questions at the last meeting. Uh, the first one uh, he indicated was that it was not in the current budget, and you've already addressed that, because it, uh, we came to this conclusion after we started the budget process. Uh, as you will recall, we updated the Kronos timekeeping system, and that process continued through the beginning of the budget process. And when we were completed with that, we came to the conclusion that the upgrade that we really needed was on the payroll side. The upgrade to Kronos was a wonderful endeavor. Uh, it has produced terrific results. Things like the PBJ reporting system for the nursing home are now very easy to do. And we've met that Medicaid, Medicare requirement. PBJ, please. Uh, payroll based journal. It's a reporting system to Medicare and Medicaid that was looming on the horizon and uh, came to fruition and this timekeeping system allows us to report easily to that. Uh, the second question was had we consulted with the IT consultant about the need for an upgrade and the answer to that is yes we are in constant uh, discussion with the IT consultant about what we need to do. 
even though he doesn't have a lot to do with payroll systems, we, he is still in the loop and we've had that discussion. Uh, the third question related to uh, hardware that might be needed. Would we need a new server? And the simple answer to that is no. Uh, we have reprocessed servers that will serve our purpose here. Uh, the next scheduled upgrade for services, servers is in 2018, and that will, will happen then. Uh, fourth question related to why didn't we go to the cloud. Uh, I consulted with Kronos on this issue, and they said, if you go to the cloud now, you would have to pay for the Kronos timekeeping system again, because you're doing it based on a local server, which is what we had available at the, at the time, uh, because cloud-based uh, systems were not available to us because we didn't have the fiber optic project completed at that point. Uh, if we did go to the cloud, uh, not only would we have to pay for it again, uh, we would have to pay a maintenance fee on the cloud because being on the cloud doesn't reduce your cost. It just puts it in their boat instead of in ours. And uh, we're perfectly capable of running it here. Uh, the fifth question related to documentation on problems. Uh, yes, we have documentation. Much of it is mental because we deal with the payroll system on a bi-weekly basis. And we've been going through this harangue for a year and a half. Uh, so there is no written documentation on it. Next question um, related to having the G GL come in July, the replacement of the GL system. That will, all that will happen in July is that we'll begin to talk about what it will cost to replace the general ledger system. That will be uh, part of the 2018 budget. Uh, and reasons for need, um, what we have now is a payroll system and software which is 20 plus years old. The rule of thumb in, in payroll software is that you really ought to be looking at replacing it every 10 years. So we're way overdue for this. Uh, our software system, uh, the payment system, is sadly outdated. It doesn't do what we need it to do. Uh, we've tried every angle we can think of to, to get it to, um, to bend to our needs, but it's just not happening. And the last question he asked was about fiber uh, optic being able to give us access to the financial system for the department. Uh, that will happen when we change the general ledger system. Because as you recall, last year we talked about adding a purchase order system and, a, and an accounts payable system. But well, we're not going to add those until we go to a new general ledger system. It would be a waste of money to add them now and to give up that access. So that is still coming and still coming down the line. But we'll wait until we make the next move. Thank, thank you. Before, before we get there, and, and thank you for sending me information on Kronos. That is not in any way, shape, and or form of what was requested. What was requested is answers to the nine questions, and we're, we're receiving a verbal commentary today on that. I do not even begin to understand why this process is so difficult and why we couldn't have gotten that prior to this. I apologize. I, and, I, and I'm not sad. I'm, and I would still like to have that <coughs> for you. Uh, we have conversations going on with Kronos at the state this week, and I would certainly like to have that information, especially about the cloud, repurchasing product a second time, and others in front of me so that I can have further discussion. Representative Cordelli and then I'll go to Representative Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A um, uh, couple of things. Um, if we have been, first, uh, backtrack once, um, uh, with ACS system, if that system is 20 years old, um, each year we have included in the budget um, money for maintenance upgrades and revisions and so forth. And um, I'm curious as to if the system is 20 years old, why those um, upgrades and so forth to the ACS system have not been made, um, and wh what has happened to that money for those those projects. Uh, two, if there has let's, been let's let's handle okay. one at a time. And Thank I you. I would I. 
correct me if I'm wrong, but we've been paying for those, haven't we, on our ACS system? That's what you're paying for is support and the standard upgrades that they come when they modify their system. Uh, it is not a revision of the software because the software remains the old 20-year-old software. Brought, brought to what is needed for today to be using their service, isn't it? Right. Okay. Thank you. Representative Cordelli, second question. Thank you. Um, if there has been a year and a half harangue um, with ACS about the uh, interface to uh, Kronos, um, I'm mystified why there is nothing in writing um, about that harangue. You know, I, I come from a business background, um, and the axiom was uh, if it's not in writing, it doesn't count. So I'm disappointed to hear that there has been no written communication with ACS about the problems, and just all verbal communications. I, I believe that's a point that's been brought up previously and hasn't been disputed. Ken? Um, <coughs> we'll have these answers all written up for you by, by the end of the day today and, and sent to the delegation. Is that that'd be all right? Sure. Representative Cordelli? And Thank I'll, you. And I'll come to you, Representative Bell. Um, Is it something concerning the first two points, Representative Bell? No. Okay. okay. Um, a, a third point, um, the information that was sent out was um, a quote um, from uh, Kronos for the um, $100,000, and that included um, the software uh, that would be included. Um, there were, if I could just read this, and some of you might not have this, uh, 10 licenses for administrators, 400 licenses for payroll, and for employee HR slash payroll, and 30 licenses for manager um, provisions. Um, so two questions related to that. Please. Why the, the number of licenses? I didn't think we had 400 employees. And probably wouldn't be going to 400 employees. And secondly, um, after maybe we get an answer to that, I have a question about the uh, HR slash payroll uh, software. Thank you. I would assume that's the minimum license buy-in on that software. It comes in blocks. And, and that's, that's the, the initial block. block. Fit the roughly 350 active employees we have. Okay. Further question? Thank you. Um, the uh, workforce HR and payroll licenses that are quoted in here. Um, I went back to the Chrono system to look and see what the HR and payroll software was. Um, and if I could quote from their write-up, a single integrated HR and payroll solution bringing you the benefits of seamless integration. Um, uh, let's see. lost my place on that. But the uh, HR um, component does bring um, things like applicant tracking, employee management, position management, benefits management, compensation management, and reporting. Um, and I'm wondering, um, we are now also requesting a half-time benefits person um, in the nursing home and I'm wondering if the licenses for the software we're buying here um, includes many of those benefit functions that um, have been subject of discussion. Um, if we get this software, why do we also need that half-time benefits person? Thank you. I think the simple answer to that is uh, it's an error on the part of Kronos when they sent us this proposal uh, because the original discussion we had way back with Kronos was a combined HR and payroll system. Uh, when we downgraded because we choked on the cost of the HR system, uh, they left some of the language in it. So that this is not an HR seamless package, this is a payroll package. Uh, and when we finally get the actual proposal, uh, that language will be revised. Uh, and as, as for needing the, the other position at the nursing home, Two-thirds of our employees are stationed at the nursing home. Um, it is essential for us to function efficiently to have somebody on site that can handle their needs uh, as they come off shift. Uh, 
or as they change this so that uh, you know that that position is not going to reduce the cost of the payroll system. Thank you, Representative. Uh, just a follow-up question: um, If that uh, was an error on the part of Kronos, will we see a new? Uh, software order form with a lower price since it does not include the uh, HR software? Yes. The price is the correct price. Uh, it's the wording in there that is incorrect. Thank you. Okay. Representative Butler? I just had a clarifying question. Um, in the last uh, of the questions that you answered, you talked about the fiber optic and the ability to communicate financial systems and I didn't understand the answer to that. If you would could try it again. Sure. Once we uh, replace the general ledger system, presumably in 2018, uh, we will open up access to the department heads so that they can view their financial data so that they will not have to ask us to print it out and send it over to them. They will have direct access. The payroll system obviously is not going to be opened up to, to managers. Uh, for security reasons. That's a, a closely held system. Uh, but the general ledger should, certainly will have view-only uh, information and in packages like um, purchase order and requisition, uh, direct access so that they can process their needs. Follow-up? Yes, please. Um, and that's not possible until uh, the GL is uh, in place. Um, it doesn't make sense now to purchase those modules uh, at this point if we're going to change the system anyway in a year. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Representative Cardelli. Thank you. Um, will there be any additional cost for inter interfacing the uh, uh, new payroll system from Kronos to ACS General Ledger? That's included in that price. It, I don't see, there's no cost from ACS, and you've talked to ACS about it interfacing the new payroll system, correct? No, the, the interface is, is up to uh, Kronos to produce and to include in their package so that it continues to interface with ACS for the balance of 2017 and uh, whatever time it takes in 2018 to transition to a new system, a new general ledger system. That will remain in place. And it, in addition, we will, over time, retain the hardware that currently uh, maintains the ACS payroll system so that we have archives available so that we can uh, delve back into the past to pull up information on people for the New Hampshire retirement system. But that will, won't cost us anything to do. Representative Chairman. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, fully, in the interest of full disclosure, me waiting a week or two or three, but it doesn't make any difference understanding this. I will tell you that. But I think there are some people who, who do understand it who have a lot of questions yet. I'm gathering, and correct me if I'm wrong, that the delegation is not ready to vote on this proposal at this time without some more questions or answers. And if that's the case, I would propose that the subcommittee that we have dealing with this meet in the intervening time of when we have our last meeting, come up with a recommendation. And I would suggest that we, and I don't care which way you do it, we either, we either vote to recommend a, a budget that includes it or doesn't include it, I don't care which way, and then when the final determination is made where we approve something in Concord, we have the choice at that time of either depending on what we do, taking it out or leaving it in. So that way we get to move along. And if, if people are satisfied voting one way or the other, that's the people who are involved. But I don't know how to ask that. So. Thank you. Representative Butler. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and, and uh, thank you for that clarification. I was going to move to uh, uh, approve the capital expenditures budget, uh, including the Kronos upgrade. However, um, if we can do that with a uh, final vote recommendation in Concord with uh, continued analysis uh, by the subcommittee, uh, I'm okay with that as well. Um, I think it, it depends on Representative Cordelli to a great extent. 
um, because I believe that uh, our administration and commissioners are recommending that we move forward with this and um, uh, I believe ultimately that we should support um, having as effective uh, a payroll and uh, financial system as possible and I think that's going to be achieved uh, with this upgrade and fortunately or unfortunately with a general ledger uh, change in the future. Um, but if there's a way to clarify um, the need even further, then I would support that. Representative Cardelli, then Representative uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would be willing to um, include that um, at this time. Um, and then if further uh, discussions lead to a different conclusion on anyone's part, then we could uh, possibly remove it um, at the uh, Concord meeting on the 23rd. 23rd, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, put a motion and be out of order, Mr. Chairman. Uh, please, uh, I, I move to move $100,000 in the contingency line in case this goes beyond our meeting on the 23rd. Um, motion is to move the hundred thousand dollars into contingency. I'll second the motion for discussion. Um, I would agree with the motion in that it was moved over to there. It would allow us time to look at that, and the ex the expense would not concur until it came before at least the executive committee for an approval to do that, which would allow them more time to bring that forward. It would allow us to move through the budget. Representative Wells. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I understand the uh, motion and uh, I think the rationale. My uh, confusion about it is that um, it seems to me that we are close to having all the answers that we need. And if we're going to make a final um, uh, vote in Concord uh, in the near future, um, I don't know beyond clarifying a couple of questions, um, what will be gained by putting it into contingency and then needing to take it out of contingency and put it into capital. Thank you. My, my point on that is that if we can get clarification and we can get satisfactory answers uh, for the 23rd, then there would, um, then we would be in the process that they could, uh, they could request the money, we could bring it out and it could be we get to the 23rd, which I believe is what represented motion was on that we still hadn't had everything that was needed at that point in time, it'll stay there or, or be removed from there. Okay. Representative Chan, did you have a question? No, maybe. Well, I can pass over to that. No, I, I guess I'm just a little confused, only because if Representative Cordelli thinks it's okay to put it in there, I don't know. I, I don't know why we wouldn't, but I, I don't. I guess the contingency Thank thing solves the same right. idea, and he can come to the meeting on the twenty third and say it's fine, and we'll go from there. Okay. Delegation, want to take questions from the commissioners, please. Commissioner Babson first. Uh, I have on my uh, sheet from the last time we got, Mr. Chairman, that uh, the. Uh, Hundred thousand dollar discussion with the table. I don't know whether that's all right. Yeah, they just kind of That's true. Uh, we, we, can bring, we can bring a motion to bring it off the table. Thank you, Representative Babson. Ken, and we will do that. According to DRA, you can't put an un, you can't put known costs into the contingency. Only unknown costs. Thank you. And I and I ninety nine. And I and I I, I, I do not I, I do not disagree with your statement. Uh, this this uh, county has come an awful long ways in two and three years. I think the feeling of this delegation and that board sitting there is so much better than it ever was. And I think this is a reach by the delegation to try and continue to move forward and we'll act upon that in, in due time. I, it's, it's, I'm, I'm ready to take this off the table and bring it in. You have something uh, quick <coughs> I'm all set, sir. Thank you, sir. Are we still are we going to go with the contingency or not? Well, it's we 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 had, we had tabled the discussion, so I'll move to take uh, to take this off the table so that we can bring this back up. So, so 
moved and seconded. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. So we brought it off the table. Go ahead, Representative Carroll. Well, I, I would just like to state that if we go with the contingency fund, <coughs> I would like to increase that fund to $125,000 and take the $25,000 that now is in the delegation's budget for a performance audit and put it in a contingency fund where the law says it's supposed to be. It's already been moved, sir. Pardon? It's already been moved. I moved it already. Because you can't do okay. that. Okay. So, uh, any further discussion? We, we have a motion. We have a motion. Spence seconded. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Can you repeat aye. the motion, please? I'm sorry? Can you repeat the motion so we know what we're voting on? The motion is to take the $100,000 uh, from the capital expenditures uh, and move it, move that $100,000 into the contingency fund, which is on page 26. I'm sorry. And we are on page 26. We're on page 26. And move to contingency period. And move to contingency. Is that enough clarification for you, Representative Marsh? Yes, thank you. I think it was the same thing we had discussed. Yep. Okay. If you're in favor of the motion, you will signify by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, you'll signify by saying nay. Nay. No. So the nays are Butler Marsh. Motion passes. So was there anything else outstanding in the uh, in the expenditure? <laughs> bottom line. So, yes, Representative. We're getting back to the bottom. Uh, my, can I go now? Please. <laughs> this is still my my free to go. We go no more, right? All set. Okay. I, the figure stays the same, oddly enough. Right. The way I have it, it's five thousand one hundred and ten dollars. Minus. So minus, so we're just in a new number. Yeah. Well, we're going to turn the page. Do you need to approve the capital expenditures for the first? We already have it, 176000 We have. So what came out? So the new number. We just reappropriated $100,000 to continue. So from IT, So we're looking for we're looking for a bottom line number. $14,418,000. Five hundred and sixty-four, I believe. Fourteen million. What was the next series, sir? Four eighteen. Five six four. Yes, I I believe that's the case. I'll stand corrected. If it Moved by Chandler. Second. Well, hold on. Does anyone have a correction? <laughs> yeah. Does Does the administration have a different number? Would you like Would you like time for that? We'll go to uh, We'll go to revenue. Okay. Well, hold. Excuse me. Yes, for instance. Can I suggest a five minute read? Because if we're going to go to revenue, we're going to need them to participate. Okay. If they're going to try to come up with a figure. All right. We'll recess. How much time would you need? Well, either now or after revenue. Uh, if we can do. Yeah, we can do it after revenue if you want, and then what, while you're doing the Hales budget, we can talk about it and do it. All right. Sounds good. Let's uh, let's start in with uh, well that, that requires more of your participation though. Okay, so we will we will now move to uh, revenue. Let me find it. Okay, I have I have revenue uh, as of two twenty one two seventeen. And it starts with county general, which is zero. That's Sheriff's two twenty four. Two twenty four. Two twenty four. Yeah, that's better. Okay, two twenty four under general fund. I'm showing county general at zero. Sheriff's income showing at zero. Uh, zero registry of deeds. Jail. Um, we got to start in general. Yeah. 17. Yeah. Well, there are okay. any changes? Do commissioners have anything to change? Okay. I'm sorry. I, I was reading what the appropriate. appropriate. Okay. On the uh, county general, 
Uh, income projected at seventeen million four eighty two seven twenty seven. Are there changes by the commissioners? Four eighty two. Mm -hmm. Yes. Seventeen four eight two seven two seven. I'm reading right. from uh, two twenty four. Oh yes, oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's at the bottom. Bottom line number still the same. Though. Yes. Correct. Okay. Yeah. But, but this so, I, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. Question. So on the income from taxes line, um, it was reduced by about uh, four hundred thousand. Um, changes every time you make a change. It changes. Down $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> Current figure that's shown on there, correct as of now? Should we, should we pass it go to Sheriff's Income? That, that number won't show until we finalize right, right, revenues right, and yes. the thing. Yes. Okay, I'll just make a revenue statement. I, revenues are important and we don't want to overinflate them, but by the same token, you adjust them in the fall when revenue DRA comes up. So whatever you put in here now is subject to change based on a nine-month ex experience in September or October. So it's, I mean, you just kind of take a guess and see what happens, but because they'll change it. Are there any changes other than the income from taxes? Uh, no. Shall we move on to each each uh, group and then yeah, we'll come back to the bottom? There's any any changes anywhere in revenues? Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. No, please go ahead. Ken. Uh, on page three, surplus to reduce taxes. We are taking that out. Which one is that? Page, page three. Double O seven. Other other revenue. Seven. Under other revenue. Page three. Okay. What else, sir? On page four, uh, the sheriff's office has a three thousand dollar grant. So that would be thirty five five. Thirty-five five. On what line? Uh, they make up zero three three. Page four, right? Zero four. four. Yes, page four. On line oh one nine, putting three thousand. Oh one nine. Grant funds, Carroll County Sheriff's Office. I can't hear you. Line 200.4010019, page four. Grant funds, Carroll County Sheriff's Office, and add 3,000. What's that, Kamal? What is that grant for exactly? It's part of Grant and Hammer. It's, it's just to do, uh, I think, four four hour. Uh, drug patrols on on impaired drivers. It's very little. Uh, it's only three thousand dollars. It's part of a bigger twenty five thousand right. dollar grant that everybody's participating in. Thank you. Further? What was the one you did just before that? Surplus to reduce taxes? Yeah, right. that's zero. That's three. Zero. Where did that go? It went into the budget. Not taking tax. We're not taking surplus. No. Uh, Rep. Chairman, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I move to uh, on the sheriff's income on page one, move two three eight three two nine. Two three eight three two nine. Motion made, seconded by McConkey, um, to bottom line two three eight three two nine. Discussion. <laughs> All those in favor aye. signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimous. Mr. Chairman. 
Go ahead. I move uh, 820926 in the Registry of Deeds Income. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. 820926. Discussion? If you're in favor of that, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimous. New motion. Mr. Chairman, I move on jail and uh, 115300. Second for discussion. Second, Representative Camo for discussion. The how do we handle the grant situation if that line should have fifty thousand added to it? Do if it's been applied for but we haven't gotten it, should we be adding that to the line? You will add that later on at one of your quarterly meetings when the grant is approved and it will come under the two hundred fund. Okay. Not another one. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no further discussion, uh, JL and at, and HOC income. Moved at 115 300. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passed unanimous. Further, Mr. Motion. Chairman, on the farm income 62750. Motion's been made, seconded by McConkey 62,750. Discussion? If you're in favor of the motion, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. No. Uh, Nelson, was it just Nelson? Chandler. And Chandler. And me. McCarthy. And a couple more, Haley. <laughs> motion, uh, motion, motion passes. <coughs> Further motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that we have 35500 in the federal grant fund lines. Which is where it says? 84. Thank you. Page four. Motion's been made, seconded by McConkey. Uh, federal grant funds total thirty-five thousand five hundred. Is that thirty-five five? Thirty-five five. Discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. Further motion. Do we want to uh, note? Uh, the reduction mm -hmm. in the other revenue loan or no. that we're going to reduce that one mm -hmm. surplus mm -hmm. to reduce taxes mm -hmm. or just yeah, we didn't take that the other total. I don't think we've gotten to the total. I think I think I think yeah, I think I think I think good. So that was under other revenue. Did we pass that or we didn't pass it? We did because it's not the minute. No, we didn't have Oh, it. okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll move the uh, nursing home. Uh, Representative you know, Butler moves. So 11, 5, 7, 6, 9, 0, 1. Thank you. Second. Second. And the number has been moved and seconded for the nursing home fund, 11,576,901. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Passes unanimously. Now we got to adjust the total, right? right. County yeah. General, we didn't we didn't approve that, so we're waiting for a number on that. Eight, eighteen million seven hundred twenty-three thousand thirty-two dollars, I think. How'd you do that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's not that hard. <coughs> This is just for my own edification. The uh, delegation has taken a position to end the production of uh, wood at the farm. And yet it's acknowledging that we're going to get $30,000 in revenue from that. Is that based on the delegation expecting us to maintain a wood operation in order to get rid of what we currently have? Correct. The, no, no purchase of a new resale product. Uh, we'd ask the, uh, we'd ask Ken to look at what projected revenue was for what we had laying on, on property. Uh, there's a certain number of bags that's all ready to go to sell that. 
and it was our our intent to take the rest of the log length where possible, turn it into cordwood, and then sell that off. Okay, thank you for that clarification, sir. All right, so we're waiting for a number. Right. Should we? Well, yeah, that, um, I, that was the whole total, but that will change. So. Okay. Do you want to approve the house location next? Yes. Okay. Yes, question on question. that? Representative uh, not specifically, but some other budget related questions. Or do you want to go on to Hale's location? Let's go to Hale's location. We'll come back to that. Did you have questions on Hale's? No. Somebody help me find Hale's. Some pass out. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. 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 I have nothing to do with this. Who we approved the Hales location budget? Um, at, um, would it be at the uh, 215-469 number? Yes, that works. Yeah. 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 Second for discussion. Okay, moved, moved by Chandler, second by Butler, 215-469. Total gross appropriation. Discussion? Uh, Are we going to talk about revenue after that? Yes. Okay. Yes. I would just like to point out that that is a uh, reduction from uh, the 2016 act actual expenditures, which I, I think is um, a good sign. From what we've heard from the past, is there anyone here from Hale's location? So I take that to be a good thing. Further discussion? Yes, is it okay to ask a question? At yes. the commissioner's meeting, there was discussion about having a budget meeting with the residents of Hale's prior to this coming to the delegation. That came. Just for information, wanted to know if that happened. Commissioners? Is uh, Monday. next Monday we meet with the people of Hales who choose to show up. Uh, so the question is, has, it, has to do about the process. That uh, that meeting is a public hearing, and there is some validity to the to the question that perhaps this vote should be tabled until after that hearing, uh, just to make sure that the people of Hales know that they have been heard before. Uh, you act on the budget. I think that's a legitimate uh, uh, procedural question. Thank you. Thank you both. This Please, Representative Chang, were, were these numbers devised by the Hales Location Authorities? Yes. 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 Were. yes. 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 It, it, comes, it, it comes from them. I don't know why we would want to do something different than they want to do. Business well, that's the, there's a thought of, okay, came from the business office, yeah. which, which would be like uh, a town manager uh, bringing it before the people. Right. In this instance, the people are, are the delegation. Next Monday, there's an opportunity uh, for the people to be heard, not the administrator or the commissioners. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the process is best served uh, by postponing your vote until after we go at least through the... Uh, Procedure of having the public hearing first. If if the um, if you're meeting with them on Monday, and if the commissioners were to um, support a change in that number, it would be done by Wednesday, so that we had that number. Yes. Okay. Pleasure of the delegation, Representative Kamal. For future reference, I would think that this hearing should have occurred at today. Just to Yes, Commissioner. Yeah, I think streamlining it in the future, there's room to do that. Uh, I'm trying to, in my own self, I'm trying to fit in an unincorporated uh, municipality, if you will, with the established town procedures. Uh, they don't fit. There really is. It's kind of like no man's land. We approve uh, money for the schools, and yet there's really no connection that we have the authority to do that. Commissioners give the authority to operate the town side. So the legislature at some point should look at how unincorporated, unincorporated places, uh, their budgets are established. 
Hale's location is a lot different than the unincorporated communities of Coas County. Uh, so I guess what we're trying to do is fit a round peg into a square hole. And if it works, but it's not as streamlined as it should be. I, I agree with Representative Como, this should be the hearing. Uh, and I can I can make yes. that a lot thank you, a lot, a lot simpler for you. Barber will just annex sales location. Well, then you, we'll, we'll, we'll wrestle over that, that but maybe government, government would like that'll be fine. <laughs> uh, pleasure of the delegation. Do you want to move this number or would or, or hold? I don't it? care. I make the table. Okay. Motion motion to table their budget till the twenty third. I'll second. We'll give withdraw the motion. Okay. With, withdraw. It was my motion. I withdraw my motion to approve 215 469. The second was withdrawn. Chandler and Butler. It was Chandler and Butler. Yeah, I'm the not, I'm not withdrawn. All right. Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the motion's been removed. New motion by Cordelli to table, seconded by. Sure. Same Okay. I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Okay, we'll bring it up on the 23rd. There'll be a resolution to that. We're still waiting for our bottom line number. What else do we need to be discussed? Is there revenue, projected revenues for 2017? Before we get too far off. 2016 actual had 200. Yeah. So if we could, um, if we could just uh, make a note to request from Ken uh, to make sure that line 3110, which is revenue, um, is there is there a figure for that? It looks like we approve it without. Yes. Uh, and, uh, Chandler is not there. I think that is consistent with what we've done over the past several years. Okay, so we'll just ask the question. Mm -hmm. Representative Cordell. Um, maybe it's, uh, well, I guess it is a question for the administration since <clears throat> um, since we just uh, made a motion about uh, the uh, use of surplus to reduce taxes. Um, uh, wondering what is the current surplus or undesignated fund balance. Sir, do you have that number? The certified number is from uh, 2015, it would be 2.1 million right. working on the 2016 million now. Right. Do you further? Based, further? Yeah. Based on um, the 1231-2016 numbers that we've been provided, that looks to be over 2.4 million. So the current unaudited, undesignated fund balance, I have something over $4.5 million. Would that be? In what? You, you could make that assumption that that might be close here. Okay. But as your finance director, I don't say anything until we can audit the well, numbers. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Further, further comment, yeah, that's, question? That's well and good in terms of not speaking of the unaudited numbers, but since we have talked about using surplus money um, back last December, um, and again um, today, um, you know, I, I question um, that uh, unwillingness to discuss uh, the undesignated fund balance. Um, for the questions of my mother, I don't know if they're ready. Um, since we're talking about 1231-16 numbers, we have a list of encumbrances that was made or proposed by the um, administration. Um, and I had some questions in relation to that, that list, if I might. Yes. The um, 2016 encumbrance list um, included a number of items um, 
panic alarm for which there was no, uh, no amount, residential digital bulletin board, an AED, whatever that is, res resident TV channel trap, um, and a computer for a bulletin board, as well as computer for digital broadcasts. Uh, most of those items, if you look at the account number, are being encumbered from the Mountain View food account. Huh? And so I'm just wondering what those have to do with food and why that amount is being encumbered from uh, that account. That's an old list that uh, was original. Well, it's the only list that we were given, I'm sorry to say. Is there, could we be provided with a new list, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Further questions? Just, just to follow up to that question, was it originally taken out of food budget? The suggestion was made to take it out of the food budget. That's not where it ended up. Ended up. And so the item that was blank on that was removed from the list. It was there a surplus in the food budget? Yes. Of? I don't recall the number of When um, would it be possible to get that updated list, Mr. Stewart? Probably within a day. Thank you. The, the, can you oh, I'm sorry. That's right. Sorry. Just um, if for a moment, if we're waiting for those numbers, could I speak to uh, Representative Nelson's concern about the white horse coming from towns? Would that be appropriate? I know it's not a motion on the table. Sure. Okay. Um, the reason that I'm comfortable with it perhaps coming from county rather than town by town is that although a person who has a problem with substance abuse may come from a certain town, the impact is a much broader impact. They may live in one town but work in another town. And the employer in that other town gets the problem of a, an employee who's unable to be productive. Likewise, that person who may live in one town may do the breaking enter and entering to support their habit in another town. That's another way in which the costs spread besides out of the town who actually has the person who's addicted. And thirdly is the uh, enforcement costs. I mean, for example, they may live in one town, but everybody shares the enforcement costs, the incarceration costs for these people when we keep cycling them through the jail. So the way that I kind of view it is that, oh, there's, there's, there's a last point too. There is a socioeconomic tie between addiction and socioeconomic status. Generally, people in lower socioeconomic class have a higher rate of addiction. And so the very towns who might have the greatest number of people with addiction would be in the worst position to be able to contribute to this fund. Uh, and so I think that all those factors come into my decision to think about the economy basis, not time by time. May I respond? Yes, please. I, I totally understand where you're coming from, but if town X is paying out a lot more, they see the level of a, the problem they recognize to the residents because all of a sudden they're getting hit with a uh, $20,000 request. And they then say, wow, we got to take care of this because we have a large problem. We're paying $20,000 because of this. And I think that would be a wake up call. Yes. 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 One of the things I learned when we went over to Belknap and learned about its IOP program last week is the impact of having an IOP program on the recidivism rate for the jail. And insofar as the jail is a kind of white expense, it seems to me that running a program that's going to reduce the recidivism rate in our jail should also be a kind of white expense because the whole kind is going to benefit if we don't have to put people back in jail. Good idea. Good we are um, We are waiting. Uh, for our final number to come. I suggest that we take a uh, five-minute recess. Before we do that, Mr. Chairman, can we move to approve, approve our last uh, meeting minutes? Uh, last, oh, oh yes. Okay. Minutes, uh, minutes, actually two sets of minutes.
One was a uh, one was the DPW minutes of last uh, prior to the delegation meeting were distributed. Okay, if we can when we go to recess, if we could break those minutes out and just make sure that the members of that subcommittee have those minutes. Yep. And uh, you do have two meetings, though the one you held here two weeks ago, as well as the um, session that you had in Concord when you elected the officers. Those, <coughs> and I, I thought we had already approved those. Last meeting we held them. The last to approve both this week. Oh, okay. So. Have they all been distributed? As far as I know. Okay. Does uh, delegation have? Recollection of the minutes of which meetings, please. Do you want some time to pull that together? And the January meeting that you had. January 30th. February 13th. February 13th. Thank you. January 30th was here. That, that was me. Yeah. All right, so does the delegation have memory of those minutes that we can move forward, or would you like to have time during a break to review those? Well, we don't have them. Yes, that's true. They're right here. Why don't we, we'll come, we'll come back to those items. If anyone else needs copies of those minutes, uh, please let us know, and we'll pull that together. Uh, we have minutes of our public works. Pull copies of that. Okay, so we'll hold that till after recess. Mr. Babson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We don't have new business on here, but the commissioners have a quick presentation that they'd like to give you if you want to wait. It won't take two minutes, I don't believe. Let's, let's take that uh, right now. One additional question yes, before I go on this. Yes. If the subcommittee is here, if we didn't post it at the subcommittee meeting, are we able to have a quick meeting to approve our minutes from our subcommittee? Does that count or do we have to have a we could, we could We could allow you to do that in the open. Have you distributed your minutes? Yes, they've been distributed. We'll, we'll, we'll bring that up as an item. We'll handle okay. that with all of our minutes. Yes. Go ahead. and take her over there. Mr. Babson's going to do it. I'm just being quite oh. holding. She's not holding. <laughs> uh, the commissioners last week uh, voted to uh, come before you and, and see if we can get your approval in this area right here, which is past the jail around the tomb corner, and it's wet and it can't be hayed. We'd like to find somebody with goats or sheep or just a provided they provide the fencing, provided they show us uh, insurance. We'd like to either have them just take it and, and eat it down so that it doesn't turn into all brush, but we need your permission to do it as well as ours. How big a uh, piece is that? Oh, it's probably four. four, three, four acres, and it's wet. Last year was the first year Will's been here five or six years, and it was the first year we've been able to mow it that it, because of the drought. So it's wet, you can't hay it, and it's just going to brush. And we, the cheapest way to do it is let somebody come in and hard down. <laughs> Further questions, delegation? Do we need a motion to approve that? Yes. yes. No, we can't. We can't do it without the approval. The commission can't uh, authorize the use of any county property without approval uh, from the delegation of the convention. And uh, that approval uh, has to be in the form of a motion. So if I, if I understand correctly, the commissioners will go out and try and secure someone to do that. The person will have to have sufficient insurance, yes. Uh, yes. fencing, and no cost to the county. Right. Exactly. And, but it, and it may end up, uh, Mr. Chairman, with no revenue for us either. Right. We're used to that. And what are they going to do with it? <laughs> Look, shorter goats are going to graze it. Cheaper goats are going to graze it. Some form of livestock to keep the fresh. Yeah. There 
isn't any, to answer your question, there is no surface water, so it wouldn't interfere with your water protection agency. It's just that the ground is so wet it can take heavy equipment on it, like tractors and stuff. It. So, I move we allow the commissioners to enter on agreement with somebody to. Moved, moved by Chandler, seconded. seconded by Butler. Discussion. Discussion. How close is that to our wells? It's way down. It's that way, the wells that way. So, there'd be, so there'd be no. 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 problems or poop? Question? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there any conflict of interest if one of the members of the an employee or a commissioner or one of us has our triggers on that piece of property? Well, all depends. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, could you... Well, if all of a sudden... Uh, Commissioner Babson, he raised the panels. You know, all of a sudden, he wants to put his critters on that piece of property. He's, they all agree. Oh, yeah, let him put it on. Would somebody see that as a conflict of interest? I, I don't think we could even ponder the question. I don't care whose goats they are. Yeah, that's fine. Just, service. Let the record show that all my goats will graze in Conway. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I, I, I think we're fine. <laughs> and all my pigs will stay in Wolf Fur. No revenue at all, in or out. Right. Correct. Not going to be leased. No. I, we're we're going to be lucky if someone does this for us. So, yeah. 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 Come on. A question for the commissioners: How much money did it cost uh, our maintenance person to mow that? And if that's a savings now because the animals are in, <laughs> do we retract that out of the DPW budget? I expect that the person that you're talking about saving time will probably involve. In helping to make sure it's set up properly and taken care of. Thank, thank you for the question, <laughs> Representative. <laughs> All right, so we so we've had it's been moved, it's been seconded. All those in favor, we'll see. Do we need a clarification? Of a clarification. Do we have to specify goats? Because if somebody wants to raise sheep, I hate them not to be able to keep the land clear. Livestock. Livestock. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Madam Secretary, are you okay with where we are? Do we have a yes, draft? And I'll keep my go I was just, I was just saying, I was just saying, I, let's let's read and what the motion is. I think the motion is just to allow the commissioners to. Do we want? Do we want to use lease? No. 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 Contract. <coughs> Contract. Actually, the, the word in the RSA is utilize. 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 Allow the commissioners to. So designated. Enter into a, an agreement for utilization of the lower field. At the um, farm? Farm as shown on the <laughs> philosophy tax map. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's part of another piece. And signed by the delegation chairman to be part of the record. There you go. <laughs> that would be right there. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's, valid. it's, a valid, it's a valid question. Go ahead. Authorize the commissioners to enter into an agreement for utilization of the Pars lower field. Or parcel, do you want to put parcel, the parcel as number? designated. Okay. Parcel it's part of a bigger piece. As <coughs> designated on tax map provided. Tax map provided, signed by delegation chairman. Dated to we'll hang it in the commission's office. Save plenty of room there for that. Okay. Yeah, and I, 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 and, and there, there was further to specify it, no cost. And no revenue. And revenue neutral. Is that necessary? Because we might yeah. find somebody someday that might want to pay money. Yeah, we we'll come back. I think we're making a bigger deal out of this. I know. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I would just like to mention, um, when I was doing my research on the, the eight counties that shut down their farms that weren't producing and costing their taxpayers money, one of them leased out some ground in behind their 
uh, nursing home and put cattle in there because the, the residents of the nursing home like to go out and sit in the back and watch the cows moving around. So I don't see anything wrong with it. Thank you. Any, any further comment? we we'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Are you okay, Madam Secretary? All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. <laughs> uh, the motion is in, uh, unanimous. Thank you. Good. All right. any, any other business? Do we have a number yet? Yes. That's, here we go. Let's go with the number. The amount to raise by taxes. For 2017, at this point, is 17 million 603,592. Savings of 20,000 and two dollars from 2016. Can I have the final number again, please? 17, 17. million 603,592. You give me my pen back. That is a nice pen. <laughs> <laughs> they, um, I, do, I didn't know about those. They, um, so, and that is coming from page where, please? Page one of the Revenue Budget Worksheet. Page one of the Revenue under Three thirteen oh seven, uh, 2017, and I just had printed off. Okay. So the new number is 17,603,592. Discussion? Motion to accept. Motion's been made, seconded by McConkey. Seven, uh, 17 603 592. If you're any further discussion? Seeing none, if you're in favor of that, you will you will answer yay. 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 Uh, those opposed nay. <coughs> Motion passes unanimously. What else? Can you have the bottom line number? Yep. Uh, <coughs> uh, the budget this year will be 30 million. I'm sorry, do you have the revenue total? Oh, that's the only <coughs> Does that include taking out the 176,000 yes. other revenue mm -hmm. and the adjustment uh, in the uh, county general? Yes. Now that's revenue. Yeah. Right. That's the county taxes, nursing home, everything. We have a bottom line for the general fund revenue. Uh, the general fund revenue is 17 million. All right, eighteen million eight hundred seventy-seven thousand eight hundred ninety-seven. Eighteen million eight hundred seventy-seven thousand eight hundred ninety-seven. Nursing home revenue is eleven million five hundred seventy-six thousand nine hundred one. Eleven million five hundred seventy-six thousand nine hundred one. Right. So do we need to approve each of those individuals? No. Yeah. 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 Yeah
the general or just not the bottom line. I think we're going bottom line unless someone wants to go back up and we can pull those. Mr. Chairman, I move 30 million four nine zero two nine eight. Second. Motion made, seconded by Butler. Thirty million four nine zero two nine three. Two nine eight. Two nine eight. Two nine eight. Mm -hmm. Revenue. Correct. Oh, I have a budget question. Yes, Representative Chairman. I don't want to slow things down. Is there anyone else that has further question? I guess I have a clarification on the amount to be raised for taxes. Okay, Representative Chandler. The amount to be raised by taxes represents one hundred fifty-seven thousand dollars more, one hundred fifty-eight basically thousand more than what was in the budget, and I didn't think it would be that much based on what we did. You say it is. Well, we had to take one hundred seventy-six thousand out of the fund balance and. And we had to put it back in the budget, so that dropped it. Because we, we were at 225, and then... Uh, okay, right. so you did... Okay. So we took the 176 out of yeah. fund, and, and right. we put it back in the budget. Yeah, we, we had a discussion while you were out of the room. I think, Mr. Representative Chandler, we'll just get to the bottom line. What is it? About four hundred, uh, four point five million, unaudited in the undesignated fund balance, which I think is about almost fifteen percent of our budget. And if I remember correctly, we started out our discussion on the budget that we would go through this year. Uh, not recommend a certain, not recommend a reduction till we had uh, a clean year of auditing and uh, knowing we have that stability and then next year uh, that we would take action if we chose to uh, because that seems to be well above the number that's recommended um, to be held. Is it recommended or is it? Don't, don't go there for discussion. <laughs> um, I'd rather not go there. It, it is, there are, there are some that think it is a recommended number, and there are some of us that believe that is nothing more than just a recommendation. It is, that's, you're right. It is yeah. nothing more. It's nothing more than a recommendation. Representative Butler. Thank you. And uh, just for clarity, I recall uh, at the beginning of our budget discussions that. Um, there was a goal of not increasing taxes in this year's budget. And has that, with all of these changes, is that still achieved? Yes, yes. Yep. by uh, 20000 and $2. Reductions are reduced. And if you've got the 176 of the surplus in there, that amount would be 180 something thousand dollars. It really means something. That's my final pitch. <laughs> can, we, can we finish off the motion? Yes. Um, so motion's been made. Do we have the final number then? Yeah, that was this. Okay. So and that has been moved and has been seconded. That is the bottom line. 30, 30, 30 yes. million four nine four nine thousand two ninety eight. Any further discussion? If you're in favor of the motion, you'll say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes unanimously. Who are we going to prevent? Move to go into convention. Second. Okay, do we have the minutes? Are you doing that with the table? No. I sent out the full notification of the PPW meeting that you have prior to that. Okay, so move move to accept. I'll do this as DPW minutes of uh, February 13th have been. Uh, Motion to accept. Well, it's, it's just committee. We're the only ones that were there. So. Motion to accept those minutes as presented, Mr. Chairman. Second. Question? Yes. Which minutes are these again? DPW. DPW. Okay. I'm sorry. No problem. All right. So minutes, February 13th, uh, minutes. Uh, have been moved, seconded. All those in favor of the subcommittee to accept, 
Signal saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Those minutes are approved. Okay, we have minutes from the uh, County Car uh, Carroll County Subcommittee Attorney and Public Works, uh, which was meeting with the um, attorney, victim witness, uh, looks like the entire budget, uh, from January 30th, 217. Uh, do I have a motion to accept? Motion to accept, Mr. Chairman. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Discussion? Omissions? Changes? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? No. Uh, it passes now. I don't have a hard copy, but the DPW February 27th were distributed by email. February 27th, the uh, DPW minute uh, of that meeting. Uh, motion to accept. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? It was a short meeting. Yes, you have a second on that. Uh, discussion distributed by email. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Those minutes are accepted. And then the February 27th full delegation meeting. I just had a question on Ted's last name. Was it Sears or Sears? Sears. S A R E S. S A R E S. Yeah. Okay. Motion to accept the last 27th meeting minutes. As presented, Second. with that, with the previous change was spoken of. Um, yes, um, I would like to have um, added to those minutes, if I might. Uh, I don't know if you want to, uh, amendment, um, but when we were talking about the Kronos payroll software, um, uh, I'd like uh, added my concerns that I raised at that meeting about the uh, late addition to the budget and the lack of documentation on the plan. Motion to accept the amendment. Are you in favor with that? Second. Second. Uh, have you passed those to the secretary? Okay, I will. Okay. She's got it. Yeah. I have full confidence. All, all those in favor of uh, the minutes as amended signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passed unanimously. Does that bring us up to speed? Do we want the to uh, do the nursing home subcommittee uh, mean minutes? Right. Okay, excuse me. We, we need to accept the minutes. We made a motion on the amendment for the previous. Um, so we'll finish that vote. Do we know where we are at? February 27th, minutes as amended. Okay. If you're in favor of that motion, you will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. The motion passed unanimous. Motion by the subcommittee meeting uh, subcommittee on meeting on February twenty fourth. Accept the minutes as presented. Second. Second. Motion's been made, seconded by Butler to accept your minutes in the nursing home subcommittee on what date? On February twenty fourth. February twenty fourth. Um, if you're a member of that and you're in favor of that, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion unanimous. Do we have any other minutes that need to be brought forward? Yes, I, I didn't know if the jail subcommittee meeting on January 30th was already voted on. We didn't do it in a delegation meeting, so I okay. wouldn't know. Then I'd like to move to accept the jail subcommittee meeting of January 30th, 2017. And I'll second. Move seconded by Knurk. If there's no discussion. If you're in favor of those minutes, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, be nay. Motion carries unanimously. Are we caught up? Columbus, any minutes of your opportunities? Uh, Representative Kamal? I just had a request. I've, I've noticed that we've had a very good, timely response to creation of the minutes. It goes out in our email, but it never seems to get within the five business days onto the website. So does that get sent, do the minutes that are sent to us also go to the county to put it on the website so the public knows it's available? They go in, uh, in Word as well as PDF format, yes. So it is transmitted to the yes. county. We just need that to be, if it's transmitted, it needs to be put up. Okay. Point well taken. 
further minutes? Are you okay at this point? I think ours were approved. The multi. I move we go into convention. Move to go into convention. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. We are in convention. Uh, recognize Representative Chan. I move motion. that we uh, approve all of the items that we approved when we were in the delegation mode. Ratify all. Ratify be good. <laughs> good way to or approve. You can write whatever you'd like. Very happily, <laughs> Very happily second Mr. Chandler's motion. Uh, motion's been made and second to ratify all decisions made previously by the delegation or however the words are written by Madam Secretary. Uh, questions? If you're in favor of that motion, you signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, nay. Motion passed unanimous. Mo Representative Chandler makes a motion to come out of the uh, convention, seconded by Representative Lane. Right. All those in um, favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, just say nay. Known, we are passed unanimously. We are out of convention. Before we close. I was going to pull for public input, but go ahead. But no, because I we need to. I think. Oh, I know, wait, motion. I was going to make a motion that would recess, recess the delegation and the convention until March 23rd at the noontime break of the House to meet in the room to be designated in Concord. 201, supposedly. Yeah. Well, I, need, I, need, I need to check with that chairman before right. okay. it comes back. Be okay at that. But. For the purposes of just the final ratification of all the numbers. And Not to open up the budget process and go anywhere else. But at least just to, you will have them all done in a final form mm -hmm. and we'll just so we have them something to look at. So yes, sir. That's and the and location. Right. And well yes, and Hale's location, sure. Okay. That was in form of a motion? Yeah, I think we need to, I think. Okay. Second. Does everyone understand the motion? Yeah. We're going to recess and we will pick up on the 23rd. Okay. If you're in favor of that motion, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, you'll say nay. Motion passes unanimously. Representative Butler. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, we are not uh, expecting to open up the budget. Uh, but there are there is at least one piece hanging out there that might change, which is the uh, Kronos uh, in the contingency fund at this point. We might move that into the capital budget if uh, uh, that is so determined. And I don't think I know of anything else that would change other, other than having to look at the Hales location budget. Is that correct? That is my understanding. Do we want to amend that to, so that we can do that, or we're? I, no, I, 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 I think it was no, the, the, at the end. And the fact of the matter is, it's in the contingency, so we don't right. technically have to do any. I know it's a discussion where it should be, but notwithstanding that discussion, it's in the contingency, so we don't have to do anything with it one way or the other anyway. Are you okay with that, Representative Butler? Okay. Further discussion, and I'm going to open up for public comment. Representative Cordell. Um, while we're still. Uh, in session, uh, I just wondered about the status of the special audit that was ongoing um, in relation to the items um, that we had uh, talked about originally as part of a forensic audit. Question to the administrator. I'll hand it over to the finance director. Uh, the auditors were on site uh, last week for the 2016 audit, and I had a long discussion with the head auditor. Cheryl Brooke, she indicates that she is very close to completing the agreed upon procedures audit. Uh, she's on vacation this week and expects to get a draft copy out to me next week. And I will approve that draft copy and then begin to share it. Further question? Um, with the 2016 audit, um, I think it is in uh, the RSAs that the uh, delegation can uh, request items uh, to be tested as part of that financial audit. And I would ask the, the chairman if um, we have suggestions, if we might 
uh, send those to you to be forwarded to the administration, please. Thank you. Further discussion? Representative Lawrence. I will say that the last couple of years, the improvements made through the budgeting process have been uh, noted. Uh, this has been a, a, a welcome change to what we've experienced in 14 and 15. Well said. And if you're a new member coming here, you have no idea. But we heard about it. And you're in anyway. Representative McCarthy. I, I would hope that everybody becomes uh, familiar with Title II, Chapter 28, RSA 28-3-8, relative to county audits. I'm not going to read it all out, but there are several things in it that, um, so far, I, I, I don't see them being done. They haven't been done in the past. I brought this up before, and it hasn't been done this year either. But um, according to the law, it says that the uh, executive committee of the county convention shall approve and engage the services of a certified public accountant. Uh, it also says that, and this hasn't been done in the past, the audit will. Um, make sure that all state and federal laws are adhered to. Never done in the past. I've asked past auditors about things, you know, and they just use their audit jargon rather than what's in the state laws. So I, I want to make sure that the auditor knows about that, that part of their job is to make sure that all of the state laws relative to county budgets are adhered to and federal laws and rules promulgated by the DRA. And there's also a place in here where it says that the county convention can make up a list and the word any is used. Any financial matter to, that they want specifically checked in the audit. We haven't been given the opportunity to do that either. So, Thank you, Representative. And I believe uh, Representative yeah, Cardelli right. had mentioned that he was he and suggested others, if you have those items, to forward them to me, and we will make sure that they're included in our request. Thank you. Any further further questions? I'm going to be. I'm going to. Uh, are there people present that wish to speak? Public comment. Okay, so we're we're going to do that. So, please go right ahead. State your name. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My name is Charlene Seibel, and I live in Wolfboro. First of all, I want to thank all of our elected representatives, our, um, our staff at our county, our commissioners, for your public service. It takes a lot, and I certainly appreciate the work you do. With one notable exception, Representative Nelson, Representative Marsh, I'm sorry Representative Chandler left. I would have liked to have addressed him face to face. He had important business, I apologize. Go I'm ahead. sure he did. Representative Camo, Representative Cordelli, Representative McCarthy, Representative McConkey, Representative Avellini. Although you are elected to serve the public, last week you neglected to serve one of our most vulnerable, one of your most vulnerable constituencies. I am profoundly disappointed that you folks, as well as Representative Buco, Schmidt, and Umberger, voted to table HB 478, which would have added gender identity to protection from discrimination. And I, I, I know how many different organizations and which organizations supported passage of this bill. It had bipartisan support. It was overwhelmingly passed out of committee OTP. And yet, your vote, to me, represented cowardice, ignorance, hysteria, and was completely irrational. And I urge you to, in the future, 
educate yourselves about what being transgendered is. I personally am a cisgender straight woman. However, these are our neighbors. These are our fellow workers. These are our law enforcement people. And to me, what you did was absolutely shameful. Thank you for your time. And thank you for your opinion. Any other person for public input? Susan. Susan, I'm sorry. Go ahead, please. Just state your name again, please. Susan Wiley from Sandwich. Uh, and again, thank you all for all of your hard work. And it's the, the word of the day for me is trust. And it was nice to hear that word from one of our commissioners. And I would like to think that our our delegation in its entirety will begin to trust the finance people, the department heads, and the committee work. It has troubled me, and, and again, to talk to the absent chair there, talking to uh, Representative Chandler, who he's coming around for sure. He sat there and said, we shouldn't be Talk, we shouldn't make a vote on something the people in the towns have not talked about because somebody submitted a budget and then it was slashed apart or would be slashed apart doesn't mean that we should accept that. And I would like to ask the question of how many thousands of dollars were chopped out of, slashed out of the budget that the commissioners handed to the delegation. And that budget did have a public hearing. That public hearing was in December, prior to all of the other work that went on. And I would like to think, and I said this last year, could we please, after you get to the point where you've studied the budget and you've splashed things apart, and I don't feel you have totally represented the people that you were sent to represent, could we have a public hearing? Would that be too much to ask? Could we move the start of the committee process ahead a little bit? So it starts at the end of November when people are elected. And then by the 1st of March, we could have a public hearing and talk about what your intention is. And I also suggest that being that we have commissioners, two of whom are new, we have a delegation and four of whom elected officials are absent, and then there's that empty seat in Wolfboro, that some consideration be given to the fact that maybe we need to meet at a different times so that there's people who have more opportunity to hear things, or maybe we pay government oversight some money so they can be the official people and they can go on our community television stations, so that there's more awareness, people have more information to make decisions. And I understand saying what I have said for since 1996, we need to have citizen participation and we need to be open and we need to be honest. And skewing the facts and listening to people making official minutes that they have not read, some people have not seen, part of the record is just absolutely wrong any way you cut it. And again, it's all about information, and if we don't have accurate information, we can't do what we need to do. And we need to know what our jobs are. As Representative McCarthy has said, we need to follow the law. And if the commissioners are charged with the day-to-day -day operation and policies and practices, and the delegation is charged with budgets, when we start budgeting and strangling operations, it's time to, for everyone to sit down at the table together with accurate information. You have a wonderful staff now all through the complex, so let's listen to them. And the other um, remarkable thing to me was that, and I may be wrong, and correct me if I am, but White Horse is a religious-based organization believing that they should do something to help us all follow along with Jesus. Am I correct or wrong? No, you're wrong. Uh, relative to the IOP. If, 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 if I could, if the, the, the opportunities for public input, sorry, 
and public input is what we will take. And we will take public input with, a, with all the determination that what you say is what you believe and you're inferring things that we may not believe or share. So I allow you the opportunity to come before us and I don't think, as it has been practiced in the past by Representative Bumberger and by others, we accept the testimonies for what it is given to us as. And, and it works really well if we do it between working hours. Mm -hmm. For you folks, but does it work really well for the public? And what does, when a meeting is posted on Thursday afternoon, that there's going to be a meeting on Monday morning, that's hardly enough time for people who are working. So, and I, I know it's not an intentional thing. I know it's a attempt at being efficient for everybody. I recognize that March is an incredible busy month for all of you between town meeting and state meetings. And let me not take any more of your time. Thank you. Thank you. Further comment? Yes. Um, this was the first time I heard about White Horse. It came up in your budget. And it was. Uh, state your name. If you my name is Dorothy Milner. Gogi Milner is how most people know me. I'm from Wolfboro, New Hampshire. And I came here because I'm concerned about the county farm. But hearing about Whitehorse really alarmed me. Um, I heard $75,000 being allocated to this organization. Did a quick search on the internet and. Their masthead is Christ-Centered Organization Serving Our Community and the World. That bothers me that public funds are going towards a religious organization. They're, they're, not, they're not hiding it. Um, they, they, they describe their residential program as men and women will live on a drug and alcohol-free campus for seven to ten months. They learn what it means to have a relationship with Jesus Christ each other, and society in general. It strives to regenerate men and women, transforming them away from their former lives, immersed in addiction, and to a life full and free from its bondage. And this really offends me, that we're going to take $35,000 away from a county farm that serves everybody, doesn't have any race, color, creed, anything associated with it, and yet, $75,000, sure. Here's a program I knew nothing about. Let's, let's, let's go with that. It just thank, bothers thank, me. thank you for your comments. Any further public comment? Seeing none, I will accept a motion to adjourn so or to recess until recess. the until date so that's been set. All those in favor of recess, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Uh, wait, if I might, I've been asked to um, find members for the um, Phase 2 Farm Committee, and what I would like is some recommendations from the members of the delegation. You can do somebody. Um, I'd like to try to get one from each of your districts so we have a scattering of the whole county. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What farm is that? Phase 2. Yeah, phase 2.